city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Clay Richards. Clay Richards. Age 31. 31. Height 6 feet. Eyes brown, hair red. Eyes brown, hair red. Hey, how'd you like me to print his picture on these notices? I got a woodcut. Well, let me show you. Ernie! Yep? Yeah. your marshal a copy of that front page. Interviewing Clay's wife yesterday, I noticed a tintype on the mantle, their wedding photograph. So, first thing you know, I snitched it. It's very thoughtful. Yeah, oh, I'll take it, Ernie. Yeah, here. And then I propped it up in front of me and carved me this woodcut. Ain't she prime? Ain't she just elegant? Real elegant. Good likeness, don't you think? Of course, he was seven or eight years younger with us. Yeah, it's a good likeness. Cuts his hair short. Doesn't oh, show what bad. makes a law-abiding uh, man like him try to rob a bank. Short. Doesn't look like a man who it's murdered an old cashier and a Chinese Never. cook who just happened to sure be there. Over it, though. But it's a good likeness. Yes, sir, it is. A picture like this sure dresses up the front page, don't it? Yeah, it's a little masterpiece, Mr. Hightower. A notable contribution to the culture of Dodge City. Well, thank you, Marshal. Does fetch the eye, don't it? I'm printing an extra 500 copies of the weekly, and I bet I sell them all. Too bad the cashier's shot went wild. If he'd managed to kill Clay or even wing him, why, I bet I could sell a thousand extra copies. We must be thankful for the blessings we do receive, Mr. Hightower. Oh, I am, Marshal, I am. Why, just before it happened yesterday afternoon, I didn't know what I was going to fill my columns with. And then, like manna from heaven, two murders in the bank robbery. Attempted bank robbery, Mr. Hightower. He turned and ran before he got his hands on so much as a dollar. Yes. Still, as you say, like manna. Dylan, I... I I'm talking you. business. What is it, Chester? Well, it can wait, I guess, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, print Clay's picture on those notices, Mr. Hightower. Oh, where were we? Uh, eyes brown, hair red. Oh, yes. Also known as Red, Bricktop, and Sorrel. He uh, didn't answer to no other nicknames, did he? No, that's what they called him. All right, then in big letters, $400 reward. Dead or alive. And at the bottom, apply Matt Dillon, Marshall, Dodge City. Mm -hmm. I print 200 copies. How soon can I send Chester over for him? Uh, this afternoon. Good morning, Mr. Hightower. Chester. Think those posters will do any good? Richards is probably over the line into Oklahoma or Colorado by now. That strawberry roll of his is the fastest in the county. He has no money. He panicked and ran out of the bank before he got a penny. I think he'll try to get help from his wife or brother or a friend the first chance he has. Maybe tonight. I say he's around here somewhere. I, uh... I'm sorry I turned on you like that, Chester. Why, that's all right, Mr. Dillon. Out all night with a posse, no sweet man's bound to touch it. No, it's not that. It's, it's the, the way... It's the way people use a thing like this. The men riding posse last night, they enjoyed it as though they were hunting fox or possum. Hightower back there, he acts like it was a birthday treat, specially gotten up for him. Everybody finds a way to use it. Uh, what, what was it you wanted to tell me? Hmm? Oh, I, I got a kid, a, a little boy, locked up in the cell. Uh -huh. He ran away from home, back in Cottonwood. Ed Slade turned him over to me when he come through on the stagecoach just now. Kid about 12 years old. Who's is he? Widow woman. Miss Bonnie. She runs the boarding house in Cottonwood. 
Ed says the kid's always running away a little wild, I guess. He flagged Ed for a ride on the road halfway between there and here. Soon as Ed seen him stand there with his bundle on his shoulder, he knowed what he was up to. So he told the kid he'd help him and then turn him over to us when we got here. All right, we'll send a telegram to the mother to come fetch him. Well, come on in, Chester, and shut the door. Mr. Dillon? You're letting in every horse fly in Kansas. Mr. Dillon, I think you better cancel the order for them notices. What? The Dutchman's coming up the street, and he's leading a strawberry roan, and Clay Richards is draped across his back. Like a sack of wheat across the saddle. Last time I saw him, two days ago. He was standing at the bar laughing his head off. A sack of wheat across the saddle. And followed by half the saloon bums and loafers in town. All right, Chester, make him keep back. All right, now stand back, you fellas. Come on, now, back. Stand back. Ziegler. How'd it happen, Ziegler? My goat, my old billy goat, he pushes open the fence last night and runs away. Forget your goat. What about Clay? Yeah, I, I tell you. This morning, I go to look for the goat. I walk here, there, from near the river. I see Clay. He sits there. I say, hello, Clay. The gate. A dirty Dutchman. You know the dog? Clay was your best friend. He helped you buy your farm, so you kill him for your All right, all of you. Keep back, everybody. Clay? Me? No, no. My brother, he was like... We was in the war together. Peter, listen. You killed him for the war. Not so. I, I killed nobody. Not, not since Gettysburg. Clay is dead already when I find him. I don't even own a pistol. Ziegler, inside quick. Yeah, yeah. Chester, give me a hand with Clay. All right, all of you. Listen. Shut up! I will not tolerate a disturbance. You know me. I got him, Chester. Take his leg. All right, kick the door shut. Marshal, I don't kill Clay. On this table, Chester. What'd you do with Clay's gun? His holster's empty. Gun? Clay's? I ain't got it. I don't even own one. Chester, see if it slipped out. While His we holster were up. was empty coming up the street. First thing I noticed. Maybe it's yeah. over on the... Another customer? Why, well, that's three in less than a day. Oh, bountiful harvest. My fees this month will keep me in luxury. In luxury? Doc, I uh, want to have an inquest as soon as possible. Well, as soon as I finish the autopsy. Shouldn't take long with the practice I've had this week. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, late afternoon all right with you? I'll take him up to my office right now. Uh, no, thank you, Chester. I can carry him all by myself here. You just open the door there like a good fella. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, Marshal, tell the city fathers... I'd like to make a deal when the corpses are as famous as this one. <laughs> Back in 53 in San Francisco, the fellow I knew earned a fortune, exhibiting the head of Joaquin Marietta. Tell him if they let me keep the remains, I'll do the autopsies for nothing. Shut the door, Chester. Ziegler, where is it you met Clay on the river? By the fort. This side, by the fort. Right out there, Chester, and see if you can find Clay's gun. Maybe he dropped it when he was shot. I did not shoot Clay. Sure. I did not. I had no reason to. I did not. I did not. Now, you listen to me. Maybe you think Dodge has got so big, I don't know about everything that goes on here. Well, if you do, you're wrong. If you think I don't know about the bank having an overdue mortgage on your farm, you're wrong. Four hundred dollars is reason enough for a struggling farmer like you. No. I could not do such a thing. I, I am a human being. To a peace officer, Ziegler, that's enough grounds for suspicion. But whether you did it or not, we decided it's your trial. In the meantime, you just stop yammering about it. Trial? Me? Even when I shoot somebody, I stand trial. If they find it's justifiable homicide, and they probably will, Clay being a wanted man, then they'll let you off. And if not... Please, I am permitted to go now. Go? Are you crazy? I found this stock. I, I must look after it. You sit right down. You want to be lynched? You're trying to get yourself murdered? Have you forgotten about Clay's brother, Adam? Adam would not believe I shot him. What difference does it make whether he believes it or not? His brother's been killed. Everybody's looking to him to do something about it, and he knows it. 
You want me to guess where he is right this minute? He's in one of them saloons, lapping up courage to come in here and ask me to give you to him for a present. You want to know who's with him? Ever loafer, ever bum, ever slob in town. Slapping him on the back and telling him what a shame it is. Taking him on to kill you so that they can have some excitement and some fun. Well, maybe you deserve killing, but it's my job to uphold the law, and I'm not letting you out of here. What? I tell you, you might must... spend your time trying to think up a better story. That is, if you intend to stay in this town. All right, now think back. Didn't Clay go for his gun before you shot him? I tell you, I didn't. If I'm not under arrest, you have no right to keep me here. I got to look after my farm. I go. All right, Chester, lock him up. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Come on now, Ziegler. Tell me, senior. Tell me, senior. Step out, Sonny. This cage is bespoke. Who's in there, Chester? Yeah, that little old runaway from Cottonwood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come over here, son. Come over here to me. Here. I know who you are. <laughs> you do, do you? You bet. You're Matt Dillon. <laughs> Guilty. I knowed you right off. He just pointed out to me one day back home. Filler says you was the fastest gun thrower in Kansas. <laughs> Wyatt Earp wouldn't be awful interested to hear that, I'm afraid. Filler says you was faster than older. Faster than Wild Bill Hickok and Hay City and Bat Masterson or any of them. How many fellas have you killed? You don't keep score, son. It's something you try to forget. Not me. Someday I'll be famous like you. And for every filler I kill, I'll, I'll put a notch on my gun. People see those notches and they'll know they better not try. Why'd you run away from home, bub? Don't you know your mother's likely to worry about oh, you? Oh, she won't worry. She's too busy working. You ain't gonna make me go back, are you? You wouldn't do that, would you? Well... Because it wouldn't stop me for long. I'd only run away again. Oh, where are you off to in such a sweat? Oh, Texas, California, Mexico. Fella can accomplish things there, not like living in old Cottonwood. If you let me go, someday when I'm famous, you can tell people you helped get me started. <laughs> well, well that's, that's a pretty strong inducement. Um, I'll have to think about it for a while. And uh, look, uh, while I'm making up my mind, I, I want you to give me your word. Word of a man who will be famous someday that uh, he won't try to run away from me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll have to have Chester lock you up again. Oh, I'll shake on that. <laughs> good, good. Uh, Chester, I want you to go look for Clay's gun. Yes, Mr. Dillon. And uh, on the way, stop off and send that uh, telegram. You know? Hmm? Oh, that telegram. Uh, yes, Mr. Dillon. I'll Where's that Ziegler? Line. It's all right, Chester. Go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Where's that murdering dog? Oh, there you are, you... Not a single step further, Adam. I want him, Dylan. He murdered Clay, shot him down without giving him a chance. How do you know? Because Clay wouldn't have let anyone catch him off guard except a friend. A friend. Now, Dylan, give me that Dutchman. Try to take him. Just like that? It's like that. And it's true what the fellas say. You made a deal with the Dutchman to give him the reward and protect him if he'd kill Clay for you. That was the deal, was it? Yeah. The fellas say why I'd make such a deal? Well, then it ain't no longer a secret around town that you and Francie warned each other. But Clay was in the way you had him killed so you could get his wife. Do you deny it? No. No. It'll serve as well as any other crazy story to work you up. You think you're safe behind that star, don't you? Well, Clay had friends, lots of them. I'm coming back with them friends, and we'll get the Dutchman and you and anyone else who tries to stop us. All right, Adam. I'll be waiting. Yeah. You wait. Whew. I almost seen something pretty just then, didn't I, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, almost. About another... Find a whiskey ought to do it. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, many radio shows win high popularity with the prizes and cash they give away. But there's one show that's tops because the head man gives away as little as possible. What other radio program could it be but... 
the Jack Benny Show, so be listening. Here's the second act of Gunsmoke. Son? You say something, Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah, open my drawer in front of you there. You'll find a small bottle of oil in there. No, no, the one to the right. Yeah, that's it. Now, bring a little brush, too, huh? Here it is. Thanks, bub. It's a right nice gun you have. Yeah, it's not bad, but a little stiff. Just a little stiff. Do you want to have a trigger? i never seen no gun without a trigger before. Oh, you're a move a trigger or a tie back against a guard. And all you have to do is uh, thumb a hammer. Yeah, hey, like that. It's faster. <laughs> yeah, that's better now. Remove the trigger. I remember that. What in the world for? Oh, I remember everything you told me. About the Texas holster and the spring holster and the double roll and filing off the site. It's just me, Mr. Dillon. Oh, any luck, Chester? No, sir, not any. I went to the store first and asked Mr. Denton what kind of ammunition Clay Richard used to buy, and he told me Clay had a double action 44. I scarred that riverbank a half mile each way from the ford and not a sign of it. Uh, I got that telegram off. You know who ought to be here pretty soon. It's only seven, eight miles from... Is that fire in town? Funeral services for Mr. Grinnell, the cashier. So soon? It's awful hot weather. Yeah. Um, any of your guns need oiling? Just I don't think so. You sure? When Adam left, he said he'd be coming back with some friends. I know. I stopped at the Alapaganda just now to rinse out my mouth. Adam was there talking mighty ugly and mighty big. He's got a size we'll follow him. Uh, when do you think? Any minute now, Mr. Dillon. It want me to take Bob out of here to one of the hotels, maybe? I want to see No, him. I think you'll be safer here, Chester, behind stone walls and dodging about the streets rubbernecking. You keep your head down, sonny, you hear? There's a... Matt! Matt, i got to talk to you. She ought to be in mourning. If she cared for Clay at all anymore, she ought to be in black. Matt! Oh, Lord, I find her more beautiful all the time. Matt! Have you heard what they're saying? What are they saying, Francie? That you and me, that... That you made Pete Ziegler kill him because of... I'm sorry that got back to you, Francie. It's all over, Dodge. Adam almost strangled me before they dragged him off. Francie, I didn't shoot play. Francie, I beg you, believe me. How is this... Shut up, Ziegler. Please, Shut up or I'll put you to death. Francie is just one of those crazy stories. They needed one and they made one up. But, Matt, everyone believes it. On my way down here, people were pointing, whispering... Old women clucking their tongues at me. They believe it. They'll forget it as soon as this is over. They'll remember that even if we once did go with each other, it was finished and done with even before the war ended, before you even met Clay. No, they won't forget it. For the rest of my life, as long as I stay here, I'll... Hold it a minute, Francie. Yeah, Doc, what is it? Oh, am I interrupting? What is it, Doc? Uh, Our topsy's finished. I examined his liver and lights. His this story. is Mrs. Richards, Doc. Oh, oh I beg your pardon, ma'am. I'm sure I have meant no disrespect for the departed. Well? Well, Clay was shot all right, but from the nature of the wound and the coagulation of the blood, I'd say it happened sometime yesterday. I'd say the cashier's bullet didn't go wild after all. How could a dead man gallop away? Well, the wound wasn't what killed Clay. The ball hit the rib case and bounced off. Twenty-two caliber it was. And what did kill him was the stab in the back. Right through the spine. Inflicted sometime this morning. Now, near as I can judge by a small blade, oh, two, three inches long. It could have been a Barlow knife. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, please accept my condolences, Mr. Richard. You call the inquest any time you're ready, Marshal. Chester, close the door. You see? You see, I didn't do it. I didn't shoot him. All right, then you stabbed I... him, maybe. You said you never carried a gun. Look, Francie, go home and... Give matters a chance to simmer Matt, down. Matt, I'm going to ask you for something. Yeah? Turn Pete Ziegler out into the street. What? Francie, they're itching to get their hands on him. Let him have him. It'll prove that story's a lie, that you didn't make a deal with him. Please, Matt, I have to live here. Tell me, I have to live here. Matt? 
Don't look at me like that. Go home, Francie. Go home or leave town or hang yourself or anything you like. Just go away. <laughs> away. Right now. I bought me a bottle at the Alifagans, Mr. Dillon. Would you care for a drink? No. Mm, guess the funeral's over. There'll be others. Funny. No, I miss that bell. Awful quiet, ain't it? It's just what? Just about on schedule. Are you ready, Chester? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'd use a shotgun if I were you. It's more effective when there's a mob to be dealt with. Oh, yes, sir, I am. Ziegler, and you too, son. If trouble starts, lie down flat on the floor and keep your head down all the time. Don't go out to see what's happening. You understand me? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right. Dillon! Dillon! Come out, Dillon! Chester, I want you to stand here in the doorway after I go out, where you can cover the back door and me at the same time. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. Open the door. It's my duty to warn all of you that you're in the breach of the peace. Uh, I've sworn to uphold the law. I've killed men in order to do it, and I'm prepared to do so again. Give us a Dutchman, Dylan. I ask you to be sensible and to leave quietly. But if you refuse to listen to reason, if you insist upon being fools, if you've already decided to act like wolves instead of humans... And there's nothing I can say to make you change your minds. All right, you want Peter Ziegler? Well, he's not more than 20 feet behind me, so come on and get him, any of you. One at a time or all at once. Come on. Which one of you wants to die first? You? You? You, Adam? Well, what do you say, Adam? You let him here. Don't let this star on my coat stop you. Come on. There, I'm not wearing it now. Well, come on, draw, Adam, draw! You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Get his gun. Man, a lie, I couldn't even see your hand move. Uh, uh, Marshal, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell Doc, me. Doc, you make one single funny remark and I'll knock you down. You just take him to your office and get to work. Well, I, I never do mean to offend, Marshal. In my line of work, well, bodies, they're just so much lumber. Make all the jokes about him you please, but not to me and not in my hearing. In my line of work, there's nothing humorous about death. Give him a hand, Chester. No, 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 I can handle the Marshal. Thank you. Thank you. Just the same... Can you direct me to the marshal's office? Uh, yes, ma'am, right here. I'm Marshal Dillon. Well, I left Cottonwood as soon as I got your telegram. I'm Miss Bonnie. Where's my boy? Oh, we have him, ma'am, safe and sound. Here, let me help you down. Thank you. It's that horse, Chester. Right this way, ma'am. Oh, I'm so sorry he put you in all that trouble, Marshal. The truth of the matter is he is a wild one and no mistake. Takes after his father one scrape after another. Uh, he was no trouble at all. I enjoy children. I like to have them around. Bob? Bob, your ma's here. Son? Chester, where's the boy? Did you let him slip past you? No, sir, Mr. Dillon. He never got past me. Look, the back door's open. He seen me and he hightailed it, the devil. <laughs> we'll round him up for you, ma'am. Don't worry. Oh, I don't know why I bother hauling him back. If he's run away once, he's run away a thousand times. This time he ran because I wouldn't buy him a gun. He wanted a real one. That boy's just gun crazy, I swear. I got him a nice Barlow knife instead. Barlow knife. I reckon it didn't signify and off he runs. Barlow knife? A kid. Chester finds a kid. Marshal, has he done something bad with it? I told him to use it careful. He promised he'd use Wait, it careful. No, no, never mind, Chester. He's got Clay's strawberry ruin. We'd never catch up to him. Oh, I try to bring him up right. I tell him to be good, but he don't listen. He just don't listen. Now, calm yourself, ma'am. Just calm yourself. Here's your little bundle, Mr. Dillon. What? Yeah, give it to me. 
it's pretty heavy. <laughs> Here, you're better at knots than I am. Open it, will you? The moment he was born, he'd been nothing but tribulation to me. Now, please, ma'am. <laughs> What's he got in it, Chester? A shirt, stockings, a piece of sausage, and this. Forty-four double action. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. That's Clay's gun. Sonny didn't manage to keep it long, did he? Well, if he wants a gun that bad, he's bound to get hold of another one somewhere, somehow. Chester, call Mr. Hightower over. Hey! Hey, Mr. Hightower! Oh. Come on over. Mr. Dillon wants you. Master, could I have a piece of drink of water? What? Oh, Ziegler, I forgot all about you. Uh, Chester, where are the keys? Yeah, right there on the desk. Oh. Oh, there we are. It'll be safe for you to go home now. I, I can go back by the phone. Yeah, that's right. I'll send for you for the trial. Oh, Duncan should. Duncan should. Watch where you're going, you dumb. Excuse me. Yes, Marshal. Mr. Hightower, it appears that we can do business after all. Get some paper and a pencil. I want some notices printed. Fire away. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Uh, what's the boy's name? Bonnie. William Bonney. William Bonney. William Bonney. Age 12. Height about five feet. Hair light, eyes blue. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose he's known by any other name. I know. Everybody just called him Billy. Or the kid. Also known as Billy. The kid. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Walter Newman, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Don Diamond, Parley Bear, Harry Bartell, and Howard McNair, with Richard Beals, Paul Dubov, Georgia Ellis, and Mary Lansing. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. Those longtime favorites, Amos and Andy, are rising to new heights in their CBS radio series on Sunday nights. Heard on most of these same stations, Amos and Andy find trouble as constantly as ever and make it just as funny and as human as they have for more than 20 years. Be sure to hear Amos and Andy this Sunday, won't you? Right after the Jack Benny Show. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, there's fast, funny quizzing on the Bob Hawk Show every Monday evening. This is the CBS Radio Network. City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Marshal. 
Marshal. Marshal Dillon. Over here, son. What's the trouble? Marshal. Why, I, that's Will Thompson's young and Mr. Dillon. What is it, kid? What's wrong? Yeah. Mom. They burned our house. Got the fences. Four of them. My sister. My sister, they... They, they rode in and shot. But... Been shot. Hold that lamp down here, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, blood all over the back of his shirt. Will Thompson, he's a homesteader, isn't he? That's right. Came to Dodge City about three months ago. Took up a section over on Mulberry Creek. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, you want me to go get the doctor? No. Boy doesn't need a doctor now. The house is right, Mr. Dillon. It's still burning. Yeah, what's left of it is. Watch yourself now, Chester. Yes, sir. No sign of life, though. Whoever did it's probably long gone by now. Mm. No reason to hang around. Well, let's tie up here and look around on foot. Bring up your carbine, Chester. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, they even fired the corn crib. Now, why would anybody want it? What's there? What is it? It's a dog. Shot. A dog? When they even shoot the dogs, it's a... You see something? Yes, sir. It's Will Thompson. I think it's Will. What do you mean, you think it's what... Scalped. You was Indians, Mr. Dillon. I couldn't have been Indians. Only tribe reported in 20 miles is the Kiowas, and they wouldn't do anything like this. They've been peaceful for years. Yeah, I don't know, but... Come on. Let's find out what happened to the rest of the family. Yeah. Besides Will and the boy who rode into town, there's Ms. Thompson and a daughter. A girl about 17, pretty as a picture. Yeah, there's something lying over there by that cottonwood. Yeah, I see. Well, I guess we found Will's wife. Mm-mm. She's alive. Yeah, if you can call it that. Scott her on and take a look for the daughter, Chester. Yes, Mr. Uh, uh, it's all right, Miss Thompson. It's all right. Uh, all right. Mary. My, my daughter. They, they took her. They dragged her away. Dragged her away. Easy, man. Easy. I, I, I tried to stop them. I held on to one of them. Kicked me loose. And his, his spur came off. He's here somewhere. It's on the ground somewhere. On the ground. Yeah, I see it. But my daughter. I took her away. My baby. There now. My baby. There now. There now. It's all right. We'll find her, ma'am. We'll find her and then... Miss Thompson? Well, you're better off, ma'am. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Over here in the willow. I found her. All right, Chester. Pretty 
here to see you. Seen her in Dodge. Walking down Front Street. Pretty as a picture. Yeah. All right, let's ride. We'll look in the Long Branch first, and if Alisco Pete's not there, we'll try the other salon. I bet his boss is here. He's here every night. Yeah, I know. Follow me in, Chester. Just keep him off my back. I'll take care of the rest of it. Yes, sir. Good luck, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, thanks. Well, look who's here. Matt Dillon. Hiya, Kitty. What brings you in, sweetie? Business? A pleasure. It's not pleasure. Ah. Plenty of other men in Dodge, Kitty. Are they? They come in here, don't they? Sure. They come in. I talk to them, and I drink with them. That's my job. You follow me, Matt? I follow you. I'm off at two every night. Kitty, have you seen Holisco tonight? No. He hasn't been in, Matt. Ben Rourke's sitting over there at a door table, though. Good. I'll talk to him. I'll see you, Kitty. Sure, Matt. Sure you will. All right, boys, here's where money talks. I'm raising another hundred and I'll stand pat. Ben? Huh? Well, it's the marshal himself. I'd like to talk to you, Ben. All right, Matt, talk. Not here. We'll go over there by the bar. I'm sorry, I'm busy. I got a pat hand and a cinch back. Maybe. This is official, Ben. Me? Me and I want to talk to you. Now, come on. Take over my hand, Donnelly. I'll be right back. All right, Matt, let's have it. What do you want to talk about? One of your cowboys, Ben. Jalisco Pete. What about him? Know where he is? Around somewhere, I guess. Why? I'd like to know if he lost his spur recently. Tonight, in fact. It's pretty, ain't it? Mexican silver, needlepoint, raw, gold inlay. Pete's the only man I know in Dodge who's got a pair like this. All right, I'll see that Pete gets it. He'll appreciate your finding. I doubt that. I found it lying beside a woman he'd just kicked to death. Will Thompson and his whole family were wiped out a few hours ago by four night riders. You know anything about it? How would I know about it? Your boys call you King Rourke, don't they? Never heard of one of them pulling anything without being sure you'd back him up. Matt, are you claiming I was in on this? You're a cattle rancher, Ben, an open range man. You boys all hate the homesteaders coming in with their plows and fences. Been a lot of fences cut by night riders. No, it's murder. You haven't named me yet, Matt. A couple of months ago, here in the Long Branch, I heard you say you'd get the homesteaders out of Ford County if you had to burn them out. Well, did you? Sometimes a man gets known as a fast gunslinger and it goes to his head. I asked you a question, Ben. Then he gets himself a tin star and goes around bothering people. Ben, if you're figuring to draw on me, don't. Why not, Matt? I've seen you in action. You're not fast enough. Now, I asked you a question. And maybe I don't feel like... What's going on in here? Nothing. Oh, there you are, Marshal. How are you, Colonel? <laughs> Marshal, what's this I hear about an Indian uprising? There's been none that I've heard about. Whole family massacre, the way I hear it, sir. Murdered and scalped. Scalped? Two of them were. So it was Indians. What game are you playing, Matt? Indians don't cut fences, Ben. That's a cattleman's trick. Scalping, too? Could have been an afterthought. It wasn't an Indian who lost that spur. Well, we'll soon find out about it. I'm riding into the Kiowa country with Troop C tonight. I hope you won't do that, Colonel Blake. You know the Kiowas are peaceable enough when you let them alone, but if you push them, they'll fight. True enough, Marshal. We can't let them get away with it. The Indians weren't responsible, Colonel. I got evidence to the contrary. Give me 24 hours and I'll prove it. Well, I certainly don't relish stirring up a tribal war, but... Just 24 hours. Well, 
All right. Ben, if you know where Jalisco is, you better turn him in. It'll save trouble. When any of my boys need discipline, I take care of it. Not this time. Other people are involved. Homesteaders. Squatting on a measly 320 acres apiece. Ruining the whole country. They got rights, Ben. Who says so? I do. Morning, Marshal. Good morning. Any luck, Chester? No, sir. I just stopped by the jail here to see if you'd found it. I wish I had. I'll head out again in a few minutes. Oh, this fellow's been waiting for you all morning, Mr. Dillon. Is that so? My name's Ezra Hawkins, Marshal. We ain't met before. I got a homestead up the river. It don't leave me much time to get to town. I see. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Hawkins? Well, it's about what happened to the Thompson family last night. The other homesteaders sort of pointed me to speak for the whole bunch. All right, speak. Well, we want to know what you aim to do about it, Mr. Dillon. I aim to get the killers. When? Mr. Hawkins, I've been up all night trying to get an answer to that question. If you've got any information to offer, fine. If you haven't, then... What's up, Chester? A trail herd hit town, I guess. Damn, pull up, boys. Pretty side, Dodge City Jail. Come on, let's decorate it. Let's go, Chester. Yes, sir. All right. Hold it there. Hold it. My, my. Jail is occupied, boys. You men just blow into town? Who are you talking to, men, Sheriff? These are curly wolves from the first yeah. of Bar B, the roughest stuff is off in the pan. And you're not talking to the sheriff. I'm the U.S. Marshal. You the range boss? That's right. Red Dudley. What about it? Dudley, we got a new law here against shooting off firearms inside the city limits. Yeah? You mean like this? <laughs> no, Dudley, I mean more like this. Now, come on down off that horse. Well, come down off it. Watch it, you going? He's got a knife. Yeah, so I see. Well, nice work, Mr. Dillon. Drag him in and lock him up, Chester. Throw some water on him. Yes, sir. All right, curly wolves. Your boss is jailed and fined fifty dollars. You can get him out tomorrow morning. We got the money, man. Hold him now. I said tomorrow. Now on the move. All of you, get. You handle things right fine, Marshal. Once you get started. Thanks, Hawkins. Only trouble is some of us homesteaders are getting kind of impatient. The cattle ranch has been treating us pretty bad for too long. The boys are all meeting at my place today. I reckon I can hold them back till tonight. You know what I mean, Marshal. Yeah. I saw it happen in Abilene. Dirty and bloody. I'd hate to see it happen here. Sure, I know what you mean. Range war. Well, I sure we can hold an inquest any time now. I'm all finished with the autopsy. All right, Doc. It goes pretty fast when you can line them that way, four in a row. Makes the job a lot easier. Yeah, I imagine. Doc, have you ever seen a range war? No. I hear there's one boo. There is. Plus Indian trouble. If I don't bring in Jalisco Pete before tonight and find out who his three partners were, you're going to have bodies lined up 20 in a row. Well, it should bring in a lot of fees. I could retire and buy myself a ranch. Sure, Doc. Oh, oh. oh that sounds like Chester, Marshal. Yeah, he's been scouting those thickets along the river bottom. Mr. Dillon, I brought in Jalisco. 
Where is he, Chester? Outside, tied on a pack mule. Good. No, sir. I'm afraid it ain't so good. He's dead. Been shot in the back and scalped. <laughs> We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment, but first, CBS Radio, in cooperation with Time Magazine, makes available to you, free of charge, a valuable convention handbook, packed with facts and sidelights about American national political conventions. This convention handbook, containing a convention map and box score of interesting pictures and a complete history of this old American custom, will be yours if you send a postcard with your name and address to Time, CBS, Chicago 90, Illinois. That's time, CBS, Chicago 90, Illinois. And now, with William Conrad starred as Matt Dillon, here's the second act of Gunsmoke. A second now, Marshal. Here, here, here it comes now. Ah, ah. ah, there's the bullet. If it'll do you any good. It won't, Doc. Uh, the slugs I dig out of the bodies all look alike. Someday, though, they may figure a way to tell them apart. Maybe even tell which gun fired which bullet. Oh, no, not a chance of it, Marshal. Well, I guess that's all I can do for the late lamented. Oh, you see he's only wearing one spur. Yeah, I know. I got the mate to it here. That's what I wanted to talk to him about. Uh, it's too bad, Marshal. His talking days are over. Yeah, somebody made sure of that, all right. Then tried to cover the trail by scalping him. Well, I can tell you one thing. It wasn't done by Indians. That's my guess, too. I've seen how Indians do it. Down in the territory, up in the Dakotas. Slick and clean. Nothing like this. Why, I could do a better job with my eyes closed. Yeah, I bet you could. Well, I guess I'd better get ready for the rush. Looks like a showdown, Marshal. And I don't see any way that you can stop it. Neither do I. <laughs> Oh, hiya, Kitty. Business again, Matt? Well, I was looking for Ben Rourke. He isn't here. He left about an hour ago. Some of his boys came after him. Matt, I... I waited for you last night. I worked, Kitty. All night? Yeah. There's a bad feeling in the air, Matt. What is it? What's going to happen? I wish I knew. They called all the soldiers from Sea Troop back to Fort Dodge this afternoon. I hear they're planning to move out tonight. I hope not. There's been a lot of homesteaders in here drinking today. That's unusual for them. What's going to happen, Matt? <laughs> the bloodiest mess you've ever seen. And I don't know any way of stopping it. If I'd only found Jalisco Pete before they killed him, now I got nothing to go on. Jalisco came in here last night, late, after you'd gone. What? Huh? Well, why didn't you let me know? There wasn't time, Matt. He heard he was wanted, and he left right away. His friends with him. Friends? What friends? Well, I'd never seen him before. I think Pete had known him in the Pecos country. They're all pretty drunk. How many were with him, Kitty? Three, I guess. One of them was named Red Dudley. Red Dudley. And one called himself Tulsa Jim. He kept... Talking about the Circle Bar yeah, B brand. It might be, it might be. They could have ridden in last night ahead of the herd to look up Pete and then they. Oh, Marshal. So you better come on outside here. If you want to stop a lynching. Come and Doc. Be careful, Matt. Be careful. What is it, Doc? Ben Rourke and some of the cattle ranchers. They caught themselves an Indian, and they're gonna string him up. I doubt it. <laughs> We know what we're doing. I hope so, Ben. Who have you got here? One of the murdering skunks who wiped out the Thompsons. Any objections? I might work up some, Ben. 
What's your name, fella? He won't talk to you. He hasn't opened his mouth. Look, fella, as an Indian, you're a ward of the government. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I represent the government. I'm here to protect you. Now, what's your name? Keith Doxwa. Work hard. Good man. No kill. What makes them think you did? Say kill people. No kill. He pleads not guilty, Ben. Sure he does. And maybe he can explain why we caught him two miles from my ranch house. Is that reservation? What was he doing there? Mr. Rourke? Maybe I can tell you what he was doing. What? Ezra Hawkins. One side, if you don't mind. Let me through here, please. Let him Thank you. We got tired of waiting, Marshal. We come on into town. Maybe that was a mistake, Hawkins. Maybe. You have to play it the way you see it. Look, mister, let's have it. What's this all about? I'm a homesteader, Mr. Rourke. Well, I accept your apology. It <laughs> <laughs> weren't no apology. I just wanted you to know who those hundred men across the street were. They all got guns. A hundred, huh? Well, there's 30 of us, so the odds aren't bad. What's on your mind? This Indian's been working for us, Mr. Rourke. Tracking down fence cutters. Maybe that's why you caught him within two miles of your house. Got the nerve to come out and say what you mean, homesteader. You bet I have, fence cutter. All right, hold it. Now, you're covered, Ben, and you too, Hawkins. This play's gone far enough. Not giving a man a chance to draw, Matt? Not this time, Ben. All right, Katoxa, climb off that horse and get over here behind me. Move slow and stay out of the line of fire. You men, if either side makes a move, Ben and Hawkins will be the first to get it. You understand? Doc, take us in into your office. Oh, sure, sure. Right away, man. Well, Matt, what's the next step? You can't keep us here with our hands in the air forever. I don't intend to. I got one of the murderers locked up in jail. I want you two to come along and listen to his statement, but leave the questions to me, all right? It's just fine with me, Marshal. Sure show, Matt. Good. Come on. Chester? Chester? Looks kind of deserted, Matt. He may have gone back to the cells to see... Chester? Come on, Joe. Ben Hawkins. What's the matter, Matt? Here, I'll get that gag off of him. You cut the ropes, Ben. Right. All right, Chester, here we go. Easy now. There. What happened, Chester? Oh, they slipped in and got the drop on me, Mr. Dillon. Took Red Dudley with him. There was two of them, not more than 20 minutes ago. Who were they? Did you know them? Nope. Circle Bar B boys, I think. They slugged me and thought I was out, but I heard them talking. They were all in with Pete on the Thompson killing. Yeah, I know. And they killed Pete, too. They was afraid you'd make him talk. The question now is, where are they? I know where. They are Kansas rooms. They are Kansas, huh? They planned to hole up there till it got dark. Maybe they've gone by now, though. Maybe not. Want some help, Matt? No, thanks, Ben. It's my job. Mine and Chester's. Come on, Chester. Let's go. The room and house is all dark, Mr. Dillon. That doesn't mean a thing. Watch the windows. That's you, Dillon. Drop behind that water trough here. Use your carbine. It's more accurate. Yes, sir. All right, Dudley. Come on out. You're under arrest. Come and get it. Fire at the flashes, Chester. That came from the side window, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, and the one, there's somebody behind the other corner. So... Yeah, there was. Break the front of the building, Chester. Yes, sir. I got one. He's hanging out the window. Yeah, it's two down. And Dillon, hold one... fire. I give up. All right, come on out. Be careful, Mr. Dillon. It may be a trick. It's up to him. Come on out, Dudley. Well, hurry it up. I'm coming. I got a, I got a bullet in my leg. I can't hurry very fast. You, you got me all wrong. Watch it. He's drawing. 
Wrong, Chester. He started to. See if you can find the doc and get him to help you pack these things over to the jail. Yes, right away, Mr. Dillon. Matt? Are you all right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right, Ben. Had a clean sweep, huh? Looks that way. Well, bullets are cheaper than rope. I guess so. Ben, you and your boys aren't murderers like Red Dudley, but this business of fence cutting can lead to a range war, too. Like it or not, Homesteading's here to stay. There's more of them coming in on every train. I know all that. Those cattlemen built this country, Matt. A few more years now, they'll have us fenced out of it. Times change, Ben. There's range still left out west, New Mexico, Arizona. Yes, I know. Some of us have been thinking about it. Matt, they'll fence you out too, you know. Yeah, I guess they will. <laughs> well, when that time comes, I'll move on. If I'm still around. Farms and families. Next thing they'll do is set up courts and bring the law in here. Law's here now, Ben. In Dodge City, I'm the law. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Harry Bartell, Lou Krugman, and Georgia Ellis, with Jack Crucian, Barney Phillips, Vivi Janus, and Johnny McGovern. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNair is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Jungle Legacy is the name of tonight's adventure with Tarzan. Listen as Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, faces a band of unscrupulous men who seek a uranium deposit in Tarzan's realm, through which they hope to rule the world. Don't miss Jungle Legacy tonight, when most of these same CBS radio stations bring you Tarzan. It's packed with thrills, packed with action, packed with tense atmosphere. This is Roy Rowan speaking. territory on west there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers and that's with a u.s marshal and the smell of gun smoke gun smoke Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Well, Chester? It's another one, Mr. Dillon, laying near his wagon. The horse was still hitched and was grazing. Another stabbing? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Two buffalo hunters found him early this morning on the road leading out to Cimarron Crossing. We just brought him back. Who was he? His name was Jones. Les Jones. Been in town a couple of days buying supplies and food. Where'd he come from? Well, some of the boys told me he's got a little farm on up the Arkansas piece. Got a wife, too. Poor little thing, they tell me. Yeah. You know anything more about him? He was at Tad Slade's saloon last night playing faro. Drunk? Oh, we'd had a belt or two, but not drunk. Did all right at the faro table. He said he must have had two, three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars and a widow woman on the Arkansas River. Beg pardon, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, nothing, Chester. 
The money's gone, of course. Yes, sir. Ask Doc to come down when he can, will you, Chester? All right. Doc, come down a minute. Mr. Dillon wants you. Coming. I'm coming. Did Jones have a gun on him, Chester? We found a sharp special in his spring wagon. He wasn't carrying anything on. It's outside. You want to see it? Had it been fired? No, sir. Well, good morning, Marshal. Want to see me? I want to ask you a question, Doc. Yeah? There have been two stabbings in two months. Jones makes the third. You think the same person killed the other two? Well, there's no way to be sure, but from the position of the wound and the body, and from the angle of the knife thrust, I feel the killer or killers use the same... Doc, answer. I just wanted a simple answer. Yes, I think the same person murdered all three men. Yeah. Any way of telling how long Jones has been dead? <laughs> well, I'm not a Pinkerton man, but I'd say sometime after midnight, between three or four in the morning, maybe... And I'd also say from the amount of bleeding... Okay, Doc. Chester? Yes, Mr. Dillon? Get my horse. I'm going to ride out to the Jones place. I figure Miss Jones will want to know. Oh, Mr. Howdy, bub. I live here. Where are you from? I'm from Dodge. Dodge? Meet you right all the way from Dodge? Sure. Get down and I'll water your horse. All right. Yeah, here you are. What's your name, son? Alvin Jones. My dad is Les Jones. I, I guess you know him, huh? Yeah, sure. I guess most everybody knows him. Uh, your mother in the house? Are you going to stay for dinner? Why, I don't think so. Is she in the house? Yeah, she's there. Just go on up. Don't worry about your horse. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alvin, Alvin, stop that. Don't be It's not, not Alvin, Miss Jones. Oh, I am sorry. I thought it was my son. My name is Dylan, Miss Jones. Marshal Dylan at Dodge. Come in, Marshal. Thank you, ma'am. You care for some buttermilk, or maybe out here men don't drink buttermilk like they do at home? <laughs> Thank you, but nothing for me. Uh, Miss Jones, I got some unpleasantness for you. Yes? It's about your husband. He's in trouble? I left Dodge four hours ago. I thought I should be the one to tell you. He's hurt bad. More than bad, Miss Jones. I pulled the saddle off your horse, mister. Makes me a good one. Well, thank you, son. Alvin, this is Marshal Dillon from Dodge. The Marshal? Uh, Alvin... Your pa won't be home for a while, the marshal says. Well, not for how long? Well, I... Well, not for how long, Ma? Uh, not for quite a time, son, so uh, you'll have to run things a while longer. Well, Makes so I can take care of Ma, all right? Sure you can, Alvin. Uh, would you stay to eat? No, 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 no thank you, ma'am. I, I gotta get back to Dodge. Uh, Miss Jones... Could I... Yes, Mr. Dillon. Talk to the boy, Miss Jones. Explain it so he won't be bitter. Too many gunfighters got their start from a killing like this. I'll try, Mr. Dillon. I'll try. Good afternoon, ma'am. sure you got enough whiskey to finish the night this Thursday weather. Well, we've got plenty, Mr. Slade. If no fight starts that... Oh, Mr. Slade. Huh? There's company coming. Marshal Dillon just walked in. Oh, set that bottle of rye up on the bar. Yes, sir. Got it, Matt. Join me in a drink? Oh, thank you. I will. What kind of drive? Been traveling? <sighs> yeah, I've been up the river a bit to the Jones place. Jones? Tell his wife she's a widow. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. It's too bad. He was in here last night, wasn't he? 
Oh, yes. Matter of fact, he was. You wouldn't know anything about his being killed. Uh, what are you asking me, Dylan? Straight question. Are you saying I killed him? Just asked a question, Slate. I don't know anything. Someone knifed that man after he left here. He was taking a lot of money out of your place. You had a reason. I wasn't even here last night. My partner, Ben Ramirez, was running the place. Where were you? I was with his sister. All evening? Still late enough. Where's Ben and his sister now? I don't know. Home, I guess. Well, I think I'll ride out and have a talk with him. And Slade. Yeah? If you have any big winners tonight, make sure they get home safe. not at home. Or his sister. <laughs> I am his sister. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't believe me? Well, yes, I'm, I'm, but I thought... You that... thought I would be in the house? Why, when the night is so beautiful? You want to talk with me? I want to talk with your brother. But he's not here. So why not talk with me? My name's Matt Dillon. I, I'm Marshall with Dodge. I know. I've been wanting to meet you. Yeah, I've come on business. I like business. Talk with me. Last night, maybe after midnight, a man was killed on the river road. Killed? By a knife stabbed in the chest. Why do you tell me this? He was carrying $3,000 he won at Slade's. And so? Uh, Tab Slade told me he spent last evening with you. He came for dinner. He often does. He thinks he loves me. Uh, your brother, was he here? Tab Slade and Ben are in the saloon together. They're partners. They think at least one should be there all the time. Ben went down after we ate. Did Slade... Uh, uh, was he here long? Yes. He's my fiancé. So it's all right. Isn't this, Marshal? Why, well, that's your business, Miss Ramirez. My name is Evelita. You could call me Eve. Well, when do you expect your brother? I don't know what my brother does. He may be home soon. He may be late. I don't know. I've seen you when I've been in town, Matilda. Yeah? I don't ride in often. Played such a fool. He and my brother don't like me to come to town. Well, Dodge is rough, Miss Ramirez. Always he has to protect me. <laughs> Men are such fools. But Matt Dillon is not so. Are you? You wouldn't keep me out of town? Well, I, that's not my affair, Miss Ramirez. It'll be for your brother and Tab Slade to say. Tab Slade thinks we will marry. But we won't. Because I don't love him. I don't love anybody. But I could. Maybe. Uh, Miss Ramirez, Don't I... you find me attractive? Well, well, yes, I'm... Oh, why don't you kiss me? Well, well no, I didn't mean no. that. Dylan? <sighs> I've got a gun pointed at the back of your head. Ben, I want to... Fooling with another man's fiance isn't smart, Dylan. Ben, please. He'll go inside. Aren't you going to say anything, Dylan? What do you want me to say, Ben? Uh, by this time, most men will be crawling. You're a hard one, Dylan. I can't fight a man who's behind me in the dark with his gun drawn. There, is that better? You can see me now. 
takes a small man to make love to another man's woman. You can't haze me into a draw. I'm not trying to. I don't want a gunfight. I just want to talk, Dylan. Well, you're calling it. I saw Slay just a few minutes after you left this place. He told me you were trying to tie us with a murder. I said he was wrong and came up here to get the straight of things. From what I saw a minute ago, he might have been right after all. You'd like his woman, so it'd be handy to have him out of the way. Is that the way you figure it, Ramirez? Yeah, that's the way I figure it. The only reason I came to your place was to talk to you. I want to find the killer of Mr. Jones and thought you might be able to help. Well, you're not going to get any information sniffing around Eve. What's your plan, Maris? Now, to give you some advice, Marshal. Tab Slade's been a good friend of me, and I'll help him protect anything that's his. Eve's his, so stay away. You're not going to find a killer while you're... Saying pretty things. Are you through? All right, then listen to me. You say Slade had nothing to do with those killings. I won't say he did because I don't know, but I'm going to find out who did it, and if it was Slade, I'll get him. Now, do I ride back to town? Yeah, ride back to Dodge, Marshal, and uh, between here and where your horse is tied, don't so much as twitch a finger. <laughs> I don't know whether you're a fool or a brave man, Ramirez, but just let me give you one bit of advice. Don't tie to the wrong brand. It's easy to do. Just walk away, Marshal. Your horse. And walk easy. Uh, Marshal. Yeah? If you find out who killed Jones, let me know. I'll do that, Ben. I sure will. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... Hello, I'm Kathy Lewis, the girl who plays Jane on My Friend Irma. Irma, tie this string around your finger to remind you that starting Sunday, we go on the air at 9.30 p.m. instead of 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. All right, Jane. Good girl. Now, what's that string to remind you of? To buy some more string? That's My Friend Irma, whom you can now hear on Sundays, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Remember, My Friend Irma is now heard at a new later time on Sundays. Check your local schedules. Now... The second act of Gunsmoke. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have to wake you, but you better get dressed and come right away. They've got Tab Slade. Slade? Who's got Slade? Some of the ranchers. They're going to lynch him right in front of his saloon. Well, go and try and hold him for a minute. I'll be right along. Yes, sir. Tab Slade. Uh, right now, Harrison, you're too smart a man to be the head of a mob like this, and I tell your men to break it up and go home. I'm sorry, Marshal, I can't do that. Slade killed another man tonight, and he's going to pay for it. All right, now listen to me, all of you. If Tab Slade killed a man tonight, I'm going to... He did. If you can prove Tab Slade killed a man tonight, I'll take him to jail and hold him there for trial. Marshal, Tab ain't going to be alive to stand trial. Do you know Slade killed anybody? If one of these men lays a hand on Tab Slade, I'll start shooting. There'll be a lot of men dead. How about you, Marshal? Might be you get hurt, too. That's right, John. You could kill me, all right. But which of you is going to shoot first? And die first? 
Huh? Well, which one? Chester? Yes, sir. Go pull Slade off that horse. Cut the ropes and take a gag out of his mouth. Yes, Mr. Dillon. And you men, don't anybody make a mistake. Don't you move a shadow. I just... Hi, Slade, get down off there. All right, Chester. Now, you and Slade walk back to the far side of the street. Slow. Yes, Mr. The rest of you just stand where you are, looking right here at me. First man so much as moves his eyes will be in real trouble. We're across the street, Mr. Dillon. Good, Chester. Now, walk Slade down to the jail and put him in a cell for safekeeping. Now, Harrison, you and your boys head for home, and if you've got any sense at all, forget to tell your families what you were almost a party to. Now, good night, gentlemen. Chester, what happened tonight? A man named Olson, a rancher, was at Slade's place. Gambling? Yes, sir, and he did pretty fair. He left around midnight and was found about two hours later. He'd been stabbed. His money was gone. Uh, You talk with him? Yes, sir. He just mumbled about having tried to be friendly. He said that several times, Mr. Dillon. Just being friendly. And then he said, I fired a couple of times. I think it hit. You mean he hit whoever stabbed him? I think that's what he meant. Yeah. You say anything else? Nothing. Well, then, there's not much help in just that. He can't tell us any more. And I'll talk with Slade and I'll bring him out. Huh? Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon wants you, Slade. Matt, Matt, you got to believe me. I don't know anything about the killing. This one or any of the others. I don't have to believe anything, Slade. I'll find out But I didn't do it, Matt. Why is everybody sure you did? Why are they so sure that they're trying to lynch you? Does a lynch mob have to be sure of anything? Slade, before you came here to Dodge, you were a gunfighter. You had a bad reputation. You were in with the Kansas Raiders, sure, that's too. Right. The Raiders were killers and thieves. Some were. Now, when a man with your background goes straight, he's always suspect. But I didn't have anything to do with the killing. What about this partner of yours, this Ramirez? I met him in Kansas. Him and his sister, we joined up and came out here. So we'd make good a team. Where's Ramirez now? I don't know. Matt, please listen You're to me. You're going to marry his me. sister? No. Yeah, Matt, I don't know. Why isn't Ramirez around now that you're in trouble? <laughs> please, maybe he doesn't know. I don't know. He'd know by now. The news is all over Dodge. Chester? Yes, you, Mr. Dillon? Put Slade back in his cell, then load your shotgun and keep a close watch on him. Well, where are you going, Mr. Dillon? I'm going to take a ride out to the Ramirez place. I want to have a talk with Mr. Ben Ramirez and his sister, Eve. Where you are, Ramirez. It's late for a social call, Dylan. Why? You're still dressed? I was just going to turn in. Last time we talked, you had a gun in my back. Now your gun's on your hip, and I'd be smart to keep it there. I'm not going to try a shootout with you, Dylan. I wouldn't chance it, especially in this lamplight. There'll be no reason for anyone to draw. I just want the answer to some questions. What questions? Where's Eve? What do you want her for? I ask you a question, Ramirez. I want an answer. Where's Eve? She's in bed. Where was she around three this morning? Here, I suppose, asleep. I think you better get her out here, Ramirez. What's so important about Eve? A man was killed this morning, and I think she might have done it. You know what you're saying? Yeah, I know. You're calling my sister a murderer. That's right. And if you're going for your gun, Ramirez, make sure you're ready to die. I told you before, I'm not a fool. But if I can trick you, I'll kill you. Don't try, Ramirez. Why do you say my sister killed a man? No hand around these parts would stop for anyone on the road at night. Not unless it was someone they knew or someone they didn't have to fear, like a woman. Like your sister. You don't know anything, Dylan. You're guessing wrong. I didn't know when I got here, but now I'm sure. What do you mean? The man who died tonight shot at and hit the person who stabbed him. 
There's no blood on you, but there's blood on the floor over there by the door. Blood that could have come from a gunshot wound. That doesn't prove anything. And there's blood on the table by you there. Not blood, it's just a shadow from the lamp. <laughs> Ramirez. I heard him inside. Bad. I won't be around for the trial. Did she do it, Ramirez? Did your sister kill those men? She's not my sister. She's my wife. Wife? Yeah, that's why she didn't marry Slate. She's in the other room. Hurt bad. Get a doctor for her. Ramirez? She's not good. But I will not. Yeah, she's got a horse. going to do with me? Take you back to Dodge. Have you up for trial? There's no point. I wouldn't live long on horseback. I've bled too much already. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? No. Nothing. Eve, can you tell me why? Why you killed four men? For a very simple reason. I wanted the money they had. I wanted it very much. Matt, I've been thinking about my husband. Is he dead, Matt? Did you kill him? He went for his gun, Eva. I killed him. He was kind to me. I tried to love him, but I couldn't. I didn't love anything but money. Maybe mad I could have loved. Now I'm sorry for everything. Matt? Yeah? It's very lonely. Would you do something for me? Sure. Would you hold my hand? soft wind that moved across the land. Later that day, Eve Ramirez and her husband were buried on the outskirts of Dodge City, not far from the banks of the Arkansas River. And later that night, Dodge City was alive with saddle bums, ranchers, cattlemen. Searching the dark of a Kansas night for excitement and life. Gunsmoke. 
under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Special music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Georgia Ellis, Hi Everback, and Jack Crucian, with Richard Beals, Ann Morrison, and Herb Ellis. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Don't miss Gangbusters and the case of the variable blonde later tonight on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking, and this is the CBS Radio Network. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Chester. Chester. Chester, where are you? Back here, Mr. Dillon. Well, come on out. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. As soon as I get my boots on. Your boots on? What are you doing? Sleeping? No, sir. Just washing my feet. <laughs> well, now, I hope you didn't have any plans for tonight. Uh, what did you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Well, I want you to stay on Front Street for a few hours while I go up and have a toddy with Big Kate. But if you're going to oh, be busy... Oh, no, sir. Well... I haven't got anything to do. I'd be proud to stay here. Just look at the dust in that street. Uh oh, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Looks like Major Randall from Fort Dodge crossing over here. Ah, open the door for him, Chester. <laughs> Major will like that. Come in, Major Randall. Come in, sir. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Major. Marshal, I want to talk to you about last Saturday's affair. Well, Saturday was a pretty lively day around here, Major. Which affair do you mean? You surprised me, Marshal. Two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. A government payroll was stolen, and you seem to have taken no interest in the matter. Well, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't it? The Army can protect itself, Marshal. That isn't the point at all. Well, if that's true, Major, how come there are only two soldiers carrying your payroll? You got plenty of men out there and plenty of guns. Where were they? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, Marshal, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. Well, then you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing that there was a payroll coming in. The arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Well, the word must have got out somehow. It seems to me, Major, like somebody out at the fort must have told him. There are no traitors in my command, Sheriff. Uh, Major, I'm not a sheriff. You, you see it more Never like mind. That. Marshal, I demand to know what you intend doing about this crime. All right, I'll tell you, Major. Nothing. What? If I knew who did it, I'd make the arrest, but I don't, so there's nothing I can do. I see. Well, Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians, and therefore I shall do it myself. How's that, Major? If no arrests are made in this matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. I wouldn't try that, Major. These streets will be patrolled 24 hours. Now listen to me, Major. You don't know these men. Sure, there are some bad ones here, but most of them are just wild. Free and wild. But you run the army in here and they'll all fight. Hmm. Let them. You've been stationed at Fort Dodge two months now, haven't you, Major? How long have you been out on the frontier? This is my first tour, thank heaven. Well, then I advise you to take it easy. You get to know the ways of this land. You may save your advice, Marshal. There'll be trouble, Major. Bad trouble. If necessary. Nonetheless, the Army will take over within the week, or before, if there are any more of these crimes committed against it. Good day, gentlemen. My. You think he'll do it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he made a mistake, and he's a hot-headed fool, Chester. 
You try it. Well, can't you stop him? I don't know. Well, I'll be at Big Kate's later on. You can find me there if you need me. All right, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Marshal, come here. What is it, Shiloh? There's talk of Dodge being run by the Army, Marshal. So? So I don't like it. I and most of the men around here got out back in 65. We've had all the army we need. Yeah, I know. But maybe things will work out. And if they don't work out, which side are you fighting on, Dylan? Where do you stand? I'm hired to keep the peace, Shiloh, not to answer fool questions. You calling me a fool? Well, say it. No, you're drunk, Shiloh. You saying I'm drunk, Marshal? Is that it? All right, Shiloh, I'll show you how drunk you are. Now, when he comes around, tell him I took his gun. He can get it back in the morning. And if he objects to that, tell him to look me up and I'll throw him in jail. It's Matt, Kate. Well, come on in. Well, sit down, Matt. I'll get you a toddy. Thank you, Kate. You could thank me best for buying a drink at the bar downstairs once in a while. Well, why should I? I get better whiskey for free up here. <laughs> at least you're honest. Well, what's in the wind, Marshal Dillon? Or do you just come up here because you're tired of sitting with your back to a wall? <laughs> you're right, Kate. It's the only place in Dodge where I can relax. That's probably just because you don't consider me worth killing. Well, how old am I, Matt? <laughs> what? You heard me. Well, uh, I never thought much about it, Kate. You sure didn't. What are you getting at, anyway? Just that if I was 20 years younger, you probably wouldn't come here at all. No? And <laughs> why? Here's your toddy. Forget it. <laughs> Anything you say, Kate. You know, Matt, you ought to get yourself a girl. Oh, now, Kate, don't say I mean that. it. Please. Sure, somebody like, well, say Connie Dell. There's a real pretty girl. A lot of fire. <laughs> oh, you're sure a conniving old woman, Kate. You're just no good at all, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you say worse than that. I told Connie she'd come up and have a drink with us the next time you show me. All right, Kate, if it pleases you. It does. Now, there's fresh cigars in that box by your chair, Matt. Well, now. Uh, Had them brought in by the Santa Fe Railroad all the way from St. Louis. Evening, Miss Kate. Oh, come on in, Connie. I've corralled the marshal for you. Sit down, honey. I'll fix you a drink. Uh, don't let her talk bother you, Connie. <laughs> well, I, I did ask to meet you, Marshal. Oh? Why? Why'd you want to meet me? Maybe just to see if you're really as cold and cruel as you seem downstairs. And? I can't tell yet. But I don't think you are. Yeah, a profession like mine leaves its mark on a man. There's always trouble of some kind, isn't there? Most always. Like this army business now. Yeah. Will it be bad, Marshal? Yeah, it could be. Well, I'll figure it this way, Matt. The Major's in trouble, and he's trying to cover it up by threatening to take over Dodge. You know, any more difficulties, and he will do it. Blasted green one. Uh, say, Connie, your corporal been in? He left a while ago. Well, what's he say? How do the soldiers feel about all this? Well, I don't think they want to mix it with all these gunmen and buffalo hunters and the like. Yeah, the Major will wish he were back on maneuvers if it starts. Maneuvers? So that's where they've all been. No wonder it's been so quiet... But that corporal of yours, Connie, how come he didn't go out? He's not my corporal, Miss Kate. He's, he's just a lonely kid. <laughs> All right. Seems like he spends more time here than at the fort. How's he managed that? Oh, they made him a clerk, a sort of bookkeeper. This time's pretty much his own. Uh-huh. Well, he's lucky. He's got a good, safe job, too. I suppose it is. Well, I'd better get back. 
Now that we've met, Marshal, you might stop and buy me a drink next time you want. I'm afraid not, Connie. No? <laughs> You're too distracted. I might get careless and shot at. I take that as a compliment, Marshal. It is. Good night, Marshal. Thanks, Mr. You know what you mentioned, honey? Well, Matt? You said her name's Connie Dell, Kate. Where's she from? I never ask the girls anything. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but you always find out. Now, come on, tell me. Hey, City, last. Uh-huh. Um, what's the name of this corporal who's been sniffing around? Bowers, Corporal Bowers. Oh, here, let me sweeten that toddy for you. All right. You put me in mind of a man I knew back in Wichita. Yeah? He was the slipperiest, sidewind, <laughs> and the stubbornest man I ever knew. Even Mr. Dillon? Everything quiet, Chester? Yes, sir. But it's like everybody's holding his juice for the army if it comes. It's quiet and mean, Mr. Dillon. That's it. Just, just quiet and mean. Yeah. All right, Chester, you can go to bed. I'll stay around for a little while longer. Yes, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, the first thing in the morning, I want you to go to the depot and have him send a message to the sheriff in Hayes City. That'd be Mr. Hickok? Yeah, ask Bill to send me all the information he can about a dance hall girl named Connie Dell. She left there about a month ago. Connie Dell. I'll do it, Mr. Dell. And uh, bring me the answer as soon as it comes in, huh? Well, we ought to have it by tomorrow evening. Yeah, I hope so. Well, good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Hightower down at the railroad depot, Mr. Dillon, it'd come in at 7 o'clock. Oh, good. Let me see it, Chester. Here. Uh, Connie Dell worked Golden Horn Bar here. Left about a month ago. A stranger and called Billy Grounds. Nothing against girl, but believe Grounds a wild one. Has anybody shot you yet? <laughs> Regards, Hickok. Um, what's up, Mr. Dillon? Well, I don't know, Chester. I don't quite know. Uh, look, you go over and ask Big Kate if she's heard anything about this Billy Grounds. All right, Mr. Jones. Marshal? Huh? Well, what is it, Shiloh? I want you to smell my gun. Here. Here. What? And go on, smell it. Uh, all right. It hasn't been fired. What are you worried about? Well, uh, I've been talking a lot lately, and uh, a man was just shot out behind the long branch. A soldier. Any witnesses to this? Well, who saw it? I, I, I just heard the shot. I want to know who killed this soldier. Well, maybe nobody did see it, Marshal. And maybe nobody cares much about it anyway. Just a soldier. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, you men, I'm going to tell you something. If I don't find who shot this man, the army will move in here for sure. Not the whole army, Marshal. They won't all move in. Why not? A sharp's rifle can kill buffalo at 200 yards. I reckon it'll kill soldiers at three. <laughs> hey, let me through here. Let me through. Let me through there. Hello, Marshal. What have we got this time? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Soldier. Yeah. Well, he needs an autopsy just like anybody else. That was the man that shot him. he get hurt, maybe? Take a good look, Doc. He isn't even armed. This isn't a shooting. This is a murder. Hey, you're right, Marshal. Oh, well, I'll get him up to my office. Here, now give me a hand, somebody. You may have a better day tomorrow, Doc, but I hope I can spoil it for you. I'm riding out to Fort Dodge right now. Well, Marshal, what brings you here? Trouble, Major. What sort of trouble? Murder. A soldier? Yeah. Who? I don't know. Some private. Why haven't I been informed of this? It just happened about an hour ago. In Dodge City, of course. In Dodge City. Have you arrested the murderer? Nobody saw it happen. I see. 
Well, Marshal, you leave me no choice. I shall have now, to hold it, Major. I didn't ride out here just to carry news for you. I want something from you. From me, Marshal? Yeah. I want you to keep all soldiers out of Dodge for the next 48 hours. Put it off limits. <laughs> That's not exactly what I had in mind, Marshal. But you're going to do it anyway. What? Now listen, Major. Dodge City's an armed camp. It's full of men who fought Indians, who fought the war between the states, and who fought each other ever since they could spit. They'll fight you next. They'll make you hate it. Marshal Dillon, I shall report your treasonable talk. Report what you like, but stay out of Dodge. Now, I'll make you a deal, Major. Give me 48 hours and I'll find your killers. You better take it. All right. But I want the criminals delivered here. Sure, Major. And I might have to kill them to get them here. Hello, Doc. You drinking up the profit you made off of that soldier? Uh, uh, oh, 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 hello, Marshal. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, boy's name was Bone, according to the letter I found on him. Uh-huh. Anything else? Yes. Dug a couple of slugs out of him. It's a funny thing, Marshal. I haven't happened on lead like that since 65. What do you mean, Doc? Well, I'd swear that boy was shot with a... Calvary pistol. I'll see you later, Doc. And mind you, can't prove it. Not exactly, but I would swear. Come in. Hello, Kate. Did Chester see you? He did. Well? Matt, I get my information through the girl. Some of it's true, some is bound to be just talk. I'll weed it out. Carney's been seen riding out at night toward the Arkansas down by Brandy Bend. What for? Well, I don't know. Could be this feller Billy Grounds. Yeah. His name's never been mentioned around here. My guess is he's never been in town. Anything else? One thing. Corporal Bowers and Connie went for a ride one night. When? Night before that payroll was robbed. Uh, figures. Where's Connie now? Over at the Longhorn, eating a steak. It's kind of late for supper, isn't it? She works late. Matt. Yeah? Next girl I steer you into, I'll pull her fangs first. <laughs> no, thank you, Kate. I like them better this way. <laughs> Evening, Connie. Well, this is a surprise, Marshal. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. You sure Corporal Bowers won't mind? Don't be silly. Anyway, he's away at the fort. Huh? What time do you leave, Connie? I don't know. About seven, I think. Why? Anyone with him? Yeah, Private Bone. Marshal, you think Bauer shot him, is that it? You know any reason why he would, Connie? They were friends. They worked together in the bookkeeping office. I see. Tell me, Connie, Bauer say much about his job there or what he does and all? No, Marshal, he never talked about Handled it. Handled expenses for supplies and the like? Figured out the payroll? I don't know. Bowers would be in a good spot to know when to expect the payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept a secret? You'd have to ask him, Marshal. I don't know anything about the Army. But this isn't why you found me here, is it? <laughs> of course not, Connie. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, you look real pretty tonight. Why, thank you, Marshal. You really mean it? Sure. Sure I do. I have to work late tonight, but I can get off tomorrow evening. Marshal, would you go for a ride with me? There'll be a moon. Where would we ride to, Connie? I don't know. 
anywhere. Maybe they were along the Arkansas. Oh, I know. Let's let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, Connie. We ride down to Brandy Bend. <laughs> You're all dressed up, Mr. Dillon. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, after supper I am, Chester. Got me an engagement. Going riding with Connie Dell in the moonlight along the river. Is she a nice girl, Mr. Dillon? All girls are nice, Chester. Some fall in with bad company, that's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Who'd this one fall in with? Me. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, that's not so. Then who'd you think, Chester? Well, come on, tell me. Billy Grounds. You don't give me much credit for romance, Chester. No, sir. <laughs> well, don't look so worried about it. Yeah. I-, I was thinking, would you like me to follow you tonight, Indian style? Uh, thanks, Chester, but it wouldn't help. You see, I'm riding into an ambush. It'll be over fast. Real fast. Well, all right, Mr. Dillon, if that's where you want it. That's the way it's got to be. Uh, and as soon as I leave, I want you to ride out to Fort Dodge and see the Major. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, about... Tell him to arrest Corporal Bowers for the murder of Private Bone. I think Bone found out where the leak about that payroll money came from, and Bowers had to shut him up. The Major won't like that, will he? Well, tell him I'll prove it. And anyway, I think Bowers will confess fast enough when the time comes. When will that be, Mr. Dillon? When I get back to town with Billy Grounds. What about the girl? Well, it's like I told you, Chester. Nice girl. Bad company. You know, I had me a girl once. Huh? Well, well, you never told me about that, Chester. What happened? It was over in Abilene. I gave her my money to go to St. Louis and buy some wedding clothes. She wanted that. So? Well, I don't know, Mr. Dillon. I guess she just liked it there in St. Louis. I'm going down the street, Chester. You better get started for the fort soon. Yes, sir, Mr. Green. Good evening, Marshal. Uh, Hello, Shiloh. I feel another drunk coming on, Marshal. Well, then check your guns back there with Chester. What if the army comes tonight? I'll need my gun. And stay sober. Uh, but uh, if the army doesn't come, I'll have stayed sober for nothing. Every man's got his problem, Shiloh. But uh, if I see you drunk and wearing your gun, you'll wake up brokenhearted in jail tomorrow. Tonight I'm going to get drunk enough to draw on you, Marshal. That's so, Shiloh? Then some night you're gonna die. Marshal? Oh, hello, Connie. I got off a little early. Shall we go now? Anytime. I keep my horse at the National. I'll meet you at the edge of town. Oh? You ashamed to be seen with me? Oh, no, Marshal, but... Well, you know how people talk. Sure, Connie. I'll wait for you just down the trail. I'll hurry. There we come pretty fast, Connie. You want to get on for a minute? I'm all right. All right. We'll let the horses blow a little and then move on, huh? You nervous, Connie? No. Why? Well, then sit down and relax. All right. This better? Yeah. Ah, sure is a nice night. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're not even looking at it, Connie. Is something on your mind? No, of course not. Why should there be? I don't know. You tell me. It, it's nothing, Marshal, really. Connie, let me ask 
ask you something. You ever see a man kill? What? Why'd you say that? Well, did you? Yes. Once in the saloon. Huh. Tell me. Do you have a fair chance? Yeah, you need him drew first. Then you never saw a man shot in the back. Or ambushed. What do you mean, Marshal? I think it sort of goes against your grain, Connie, the idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. I get it, Marshal. All right. Go ahead. Down by the river near Brandy Bend, Billy Grounds is waiting to shoot me in the back. Then why did you come, Marshal? It's my job. I suppose you know about everything. I think so. Well, what are you going to do? Connie, unless I made a mistake about you, I I think you're going to let me have a fair chance at him. Somehow. Why should I? What does it mean to me? I don't know, Connie. I, I don't know. But you think about it. You think about it all the way to Brandy Bend. Now, come on, let's ride. Make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your own water right out of the Arkansas. Don't you think, Connie? A man could hide out for a long time down here. Marshal. He could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge. A lot of men were being killed back there. It's peaceful here. Quiet. Marshal, I can't do it. Tell me, Connie. That, that big cottonwood up ahead, on the left. All right. Keep moving. When we get there, I'm going to ride fast. I'll hang on to the offside of my horse for cover. When I start, you turn around. Get back out of gunfire. Yeah, it sure is pretty down here, Connie. You know, maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? That river's full of catfish. Did you ever get a catfish dinner? Oh, they can be mighty good when they're small. Back, Connie. Connie? Connie? Yeah, he's dead, Connie. I'm all right, Marsh. I'm sorry about this, Connie. I'm sorry I had to do it. He killed your heart. I'll show you where his is. And the money. Then you can take me back to Dodge. To jail. All right, Connie. But you won't be in jail for long. You have my word. Not for long. Let's go, Marshal. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Michael Ann Barrett and Jeanette Nolan, with Harry Bartell and Don Diamond. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week. As Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, 
And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Howdy, Marshal. Hello, Mr. Biggs. Can I give you a hand? No, no. This is the last match. Here. Hey, wait till the flies get to these buffalo hides in the morning. Be enough vultures overhead to keep the place in the shade for weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, you'll sure have your hands full by tomorrow night. Yeah, it looks that way. When these boys turn them hides into cash, they'll bite the corks out of every bottle in town. <laughs> And some of them look mean enough sober. Yeah. Well, you better bed down and get some sleep, Mr. Biggs. Uh, where are your boys? I don't know. Jeff had some trouble with the dry axle up near Pawnee Rock, and Boaz stopped to help him fix it, but they shouldn't be this long behind me. Well, if I see him, I'll tell him where to find you. Yeah, you, you can tell Jeff, but Boaz ain't even going to hear you. <laughs> Why? What's the matter with him? Oh, he's riding higher than an eagle. You know that white buffalo you've been hearing about? The albino? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just Indian talk. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, if it is, Boaz sure shot himself a mighty scared buffalo. <laughs> white as borax. Huh. That ought to fetch a price. Hey! Anybody seen Marshal Dillon? Oh, right over, there. over here, Chester. You better saddle up, Mr. Dillon. What's the matter, Chester? The Indian trouble. Two men dead and a couple of wagons burned up out there. I found this. A war rattle made out of buffalo toast. Arapaho. Well, they haven't been making any trouble. Well, these did. I, I was topping a hill when I saw the wagons go up and fire. It was Indians, all right. I saw one right off. That's funny. I never heard of Arapahoes attacking at night. How far out, Chester? Ten mile, maybe. Toward Pawnee Rock. Pawnee Rock. Marshal. My son's just coming from there. Easy, mister. There's lots of wagons in the church. <laughs> Marshal. I didn't see another wagon between here and Pawnee except the ones we had, but the Indians killed my boys. There's only one way to make sure, Mr. Big. Saddle up and ride over to my office. I'll be with you as soon as I can get my horse. I cut back through those button willows over there when I spotted the wagons being fired. We must be close to it, then. Just over there. Right down yonder. See him? Yeah. I see him. We rode up and dismounted. The last glint of hope in Mr. Big's eyes died. His boys were there, all right. And it wasn't nice to see. Kill him. I'll get him, please. I'll murder every red skin in the territory. We got to bring your sons in, Mr. Biggs. You know what the morning's going to be like. You don't want to leave them out here. Now, come on. Hey, look. Down there by the stream. Yeah, four of them. And they're not saddle horses. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. You yeah. recognize those horses down there? I, yeah. I know. Teams belong to Boaz and Jeff. Indians must cut them loose from the wagons before they fired. Doesn't that seem curious to you, Chester? In what way, Mr. Dillon? Why didn't they take the horses with them? Yeah. What are you thinking, Marshal? No burned hides in those wagons. So they stole them. Yeah, they stole them. But Boaz and Jeff both have their rifles there beside them, and the horses are left behind, too. Horses and guns are the first things Indians would go for. What are you looking for, Mr. Dillon? 
Those buffalo hides weren't carried off without wagons. Yeah, here. Marks the two other wagons here, and they're fresh. I didn't see any other wagons, only these. Well, they'd finish and gone before you got here, Chester. Well, yeah, but I, I'd have caught up to any wagons on the trail to Dodge. Did you go by regular trail? Well, no, I... I figured the Indian I saw wasn't alone. I didn't want to get bushwhacked further on. You didn't see any Indian, Chester. But Mr. Dillon, just as plain... No as... Indian would leave guns and horses. This job was done by white men. It didn't take anything that could be recognized or identified. You mean somebody's in Dodge by now with the hides my boys worked and sweated to get? I'm afraid so, Mr. Biggs. Well, uh, there'll be more than 300 buffalo hunters there by morning. <laughs> Could be any of them. We'll find the right ones. Oh, how? The albino. Whoever killed your sons will have that white buffalo hide. <laughs> It was almost sunup when we got back to town, and more wagons had jammed the main street lining up for the unloading barns. I rode down the line, looking them over one by one. Howdy, Marshal. Some of the men would take their money, drink it up, and drift away. A few would stay long enough to be buried on Boot Hill. And then suddenly a wagon driver up ahead pulled out a line. Oh, oh, hey, 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 wait a minute, Jim. Hey, hey. Oh, hold it there. Take your hands off that key. I'll take my hands off as soon as you get back to your place. Oh, I'm tired of waiting. Now, let go of that bit, mister. Don't do that, stranger. Get your hand away from that gun. Well, now, nose any law around you. There is, so don't try making your own. You got no right grabbing my team. I got plenty right when it tries to horn in in front of me, Marshal. That's a lie, Marshal. He cut Never mind. Hard. You both want to cool your heads out in jail? Now, what's your name? Tennessee's good enough. A lot of people from Tennessee coming into the territory. Most of them are pretty peaceful. That sounds like you're saying I'm not. You move pretty fast for that gun. Man can lose his temper. You lost yours four times, according to the notches you've carved into that gun butt, but don't try for number five, not here. How about you? What do you call? Charlie Kell. Charlie Kell, huh? They ever call you Chuck? No. Heard of a Chuck Kell a couple of years back, come from Kentucky. Not me. Man I heard about was a gunfighter, so he never wore gloves. See, you don't either. It's pretty rough on the hands. Thanks, Marshal. I'll make sure to take better care of them. Yeah, do that. I'll be around a while, Marshal. Maybe we can have another talk. Anytime. They'd need watching. But what I wanted now was a white buffalo hide. Searching the wagons wouldn't do. There wasn't time, and the search had let the killers know that something in the hides they'd stolen could be identified. The time to find out would be when the buyers checked them. I got Biggs and Chester to cover two of the unloading barns, and I covered the third one. Then finally, daylight came, and the haggling started. John, you want to sell those hides? Better learn how to handle your skin and knife a little better. They're as good as any. And full of holes, they ain't. Give you four dollars a hide for the bunch. You gave that last call eight. <laughs> he looked tougher than you. <laughs> six. I'll take six. Four. Take it or leave it. You think you can rob me, mister? Watch your mouth, boy. Here, you... here, none of that. Let me go. Easy, son. No. Let me have that gun just so you won't be tempted. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Give me that. Give it back. You can pick it up at my office whenever you're ready to leave town. Now, yeah, you look like a city boy to me. Where are you from? St. Louis? None of your business. When something's got you beat, son, there's no shame to admitting it and going home. Sometimes that takes a real man. Don't tell me what to do. Why don't you watch your own job? Why don't you leave me alone, Marshal? I ain't got a white buffalo hide... What'd you say, boy? 
You heard me. What do you know about a white buffalo hide? What everybody else knows. That you're looking for one. Everybody in town knows it. How? Because the old man whose sons were bushwhacked is all liquored up over at the other barn, shooting off his mouth. Don't go away mad, Marshal. Right. <laughs> Mr. Biggs wasn't at the barn where I'd left him. I cut through an alley to Front Street and headed for the saloons. I never got to him. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? What's the matter, Chester? Old man Biggs. Where is he? I'm looking for him. Well, he... He was over by the barn I was watching. Drunk. Going through the wagon. Yeah, I know about that. I was trying to get him to go back to his own barn, but all of a sudden, he took off. For where? I don't know. But there was one wagon he was watching in particular. The driver walked away from it with a package of some kind. That white hide? It could have been. I don't know. But Big sure thought so. He lit out after a fellow with blood in his eye. Which way? Down there where the boy's been hitching the empty wagon. Well, let's go. The old boy's drunk enough to make trouble. He's liable to kill somebody. Or get killed. Too late, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. It came from there behind that row of wagons. You stay here, Chester. Be careful, Mr. Dillon. When I rounded the corner wagon, Mr. Biggs was sprawled across a wagon tongue, his eyes dead and open, staring at the ground. And standing over him was Tennessee, a smile on his face, and his gun extended to me butt first. Looks like I'm in the mite of trouble, Marshal. He's dead, Tennessee. That's more than a mite. Uh, you take my gun for a while. You mean until after you hang? Wasn't figuring it to be that serious. Not when a drunk follows me out here and throws down on me. If you're figuring on self-defense, forget it. Look at his gun. It isn't even caught. What's well, out of his holster, Marshal? That's enough. Law don't say I have to wait till he kills me. You'll have to make a jury believe that. No, well, you I... shouldn't have much trouble doing that, Marshal. What are you doing here, Mr. Kell? Oh, I just happened to follow Tennessee out here. Why? Well, you broke up our little argument in town. Thought I'd get him alone here. See if maybe he was still nursing a grudge he wanted to settle. But the old man beat me to it. Now, Tennessee here ain't exactly a friend of mine, as you know, but... I hate to see any man hang when he ain't guilty. Is that your personal verdict, Mr. Kill? That's right, Marshal. The old man threw down on him, and Tennessee had to kill him in self-defense. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon? Which one of them had the package? This one. This is the fellow the old man was after. All right, Tennessee, where is it? I don't know anything about a package. Look in the wagon, Chester. See anything? Nothing here. I reckon you can give my gun back to me now. All right, Tennessee. Here. Thanks. But if you decide to use it again while you're in Dodge or any place else in Kansas, I hope I'm there when you do. Well, now, don't you fret, Marshal. I'm sure you will be. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, action excitement thrills. That's Gangbusters. Gangbusters helps to fight crime by fearlessly naming the criminals. Listen for it later this evening on CBS Radio. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Just before sundown, we buried old man Biggs and his two sons up on Boot Hill. By the time the service was over and I rode down, darkness had fallen. And everything was going full blast. The town was roaring. 
Seemed like a good man, old Biggs. He was, Chester. So are his boys. Yeah, but there are too many men like Tennessee and Kel coming in, Mr. Dillon. They won't last, Chester. They'll keep coming, but they won't last. They'll take a gun and go against a man, but they won't sweat. They won't take root and build. We still gonna look for that hide? Yeah. Well, just what do you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Tennessee and Kel will be in town, but their wagons are back there with the other empties. Ride back and look them over. Well, they might have had somebody carry that package off for them. It might be, but they don't seem like partners, Mr. Dillon. From what I heard, you stopped them from gunfighting. Took more than one man to kill the Biggs boys, and more than one man and more than one wagon to cart the hides in. Well, you mean they staged that trouble just for you? Just for me. After they heard I was looking for that white hide. Well, why do you figure that, Mr. Dillon? When gunfighters start for their guns, nothing stops them, Chester. They both started, but they both stopped. I reckon you better take a look through those wagons. Yes, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Where'll I meet you? I'll be checking the saloons. <laughs> One by one, I made the stops. The Long Branch, the Alafraganza, the Texas Trail. And one by one, they got quieter as I went in. As though each place was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. The last place was a Mexican hangout. A long, dark walk. Hello, Marshal. Can't see me, can you, Marshal? No. No, I can't see you, son. Too bad. Because I got another gun. They sell them around here. And I ain't going back to St. Louis. You'll fire once, son, and if you don't kill me with that, and I'll kill you. I'll gamble on that, Marshal. He lurched from the shadows into the street, staggered, and fell. And then he rolled over on his back, and his eyes struggled for a minute like they were trying to remember something. And then he went blank. Well, he's right about one thing. He wasn't going back to St. Louis. Well, what do you know? The marshal's real handy with a gun. Stay out of this, Kel. But I may have something to talk over with you later. You mean what? If you don't know, then you got nothing to worry about. I've been hearing a lot about how fast you are with a gun, Dylan. Anything to it? I'm still alive. Yeah. This your hobby? Shooting kids? He was old enough to try to kill me. I don't like it, Marshal. That's too bad, Mr. Kell. The Chuck Kell I heard about would have loved it. They said he'd killed two kids under 16, one of them his own brother. No, you didn't hear the whole story, Marshal. The Kell you heard about killed a Marshal, too. You made the bid, Mr. Kell. And you got a gun. Use it or I'll take it away from you. Come and get it. Anytime. Here it is. How are you feeling, Mr. Dillon? I'm all right, Chester. Doc fixed your head. Wasn't much he could do for Kel, though. I hit him. If you didn't, he sure died for nothing. He was fast, all right. Boys say you made him look like a sleepy burrow. Never even cleared his holster. And my head says different. You didn't get that from Kel. What do you mean? 
Tennessee was up the street with a rifle. He creased you. Huh? Where is he now? I don't know, Mr. Dillon. He rode out of town before I could stop him. I was the only one who saw him. I was coming up street to find you. All right. Let's get out of here. Did you find anything in the wagons? No, sir. But I found Tennessee's wife. Wife? That's right, Mr. Dillon. In a small wagon next to his. He's a squaw man. His wife's an Indian girl. Well, let's find her. All right, Chester. Which way? Edge of town, Mr. Dillon. Well, let's go. You talk to the wife? Yes, sir. Found out Tennessee and Kel were friends, all right. They left her here night before last and arranged to meet her here today. She said they were driving empty wagons when they left her. Ask her what tribe she belonged to? Didn't have to ask, Mr. Dillon. I could tell by her beads. She's an Arapaho. <laughs> She was there, all right, crouched by the wheel of a wagon. Her face was bloody, and she stared into a small campfire, rocking back and forth without a sound. She wasn't beat up when I left her, Mr. Dillon. Where's your husband? He gone. Gone where? He gone. Tell me which way he went, and I'll bring him back to you. No. You lawman. Your husband had a white buffalo hide, didn't he? Tell me. No. Other man killed white buffalo. Then your husband took the hide away from him? Well, he buy. He buy hide. He didn't buy him. He killed two men to get him. He killed with Indian paint on his face. He left an Arapaho war rattle. He wants the blame to come to your people. If the white men think the Arapahoes are on the warpath, the soldiers will come. No. Arapaho, peaceful. Where's the white hide? What'd your husband do with it? He tell me. Bury it. Where? Where's it buried? There. Back there. By tree. Go dig it up, Chester. Then stay with her till I get back. You going after him, Mr. Dillon? As soon as she tells me which way. All right, Mr. Dillon. You're white man. No good. Now tell me which way he went. You let him go. He not come back. I can't let him go. If I do, the soldiers will come after your people. He beat you and he ran away from you. Now he'll bring death to your tribe unless I get him. Where did he go? He... He arrived to... Where Moon sleep. I rode east. Tennessee had had about an hour's start, but I figured to make up most of that before sunrise. The prairie was open and flat except for an occasional roll. And the Arkansas River would keep him from cutting south. His best bet for a fresh horse would be Kinsley, and I rode hard for it. It was just turning daylight when I rode in. Well, howdy, Marshal. Morning. Good morning. Got a place I can water my horse. Throw off right there. Just let him loose. He'll find it. Thank you. Looks like you come a long way. Dodge. Now, the fella here just a few minutes ago been riding hard, too. He come from up Pawnee Way, though. Tall, dark, riding a vinegar roan? Yeah, that's right. You get a fresh horse here? I'd send my boy out to corral to get one for him. He'll be back soon. You mean he's still here in town? Yeah. Asked about breakfast, so I sent him over to the Widder Hilliard's place. 
right over there across the road. Thank you. I'll be back. Say, you after that fellow, Marshal? Yes? Understand you're serving breakfast, ma'am. Why, sure thing, Marshal. Dylan! That's right. Give me a clear way out the door. Or I'll kill you. Come by me, Tennessee. I'll come shooting. That's all right. But just be sure you get me this time. You hurt, ma'am? No. I'm all right, Marshal. He looks kind of dead. Yeah. Bad one, hmm? Yes, um. Gunfighter. Thief. Killer. What's your name, Marshal? Dillon, ma'am. Matt Dillon. I, uh. I'm sorry about that. Marshal. When my husband brought me out here 15 years ago, Indians burned this place down three times. I'm used to killing. You want to. Carry him out. I'll go fix you that breakfast. Thank you, ma'am. It's a long ride back to Dodge. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Joel Murcott, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Stan Waxman, John Daner, and Larry Dobkin, with Sam Edwards, Julian Bayef, Tom Holland, and Mary Lansing. Farley Bayer is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Something new in CBS Radio Newsroom coverage World News with Robert Trout presents as a special weekly feature An interview with a crack CBS Radio News correspondent This correspondent flies in from his post overseas To give you his authoritative eyewitness viewpoint on latest developments Tomorrow afternoon on most of these same stations World News with Robert Trout This is Clarence Cassell speaking And remember, from now to November, you'll find intensive, impartial campaign coverage on the CBS Radio Network. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. That's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon. United States Marshal. Sure is hot today, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Used to get hotter in Sweetwater, though. Uh, Texas? Yes, sir. Yeah, but I wasn't there very long. No. <laughs> what'd you do there, Chester? Oh, I was a salesman, Mr. Dillon. Salesman? <laughs> Well, what'd you sell? Lightning rods. Lightning? Oh, 
Well, now, there are good things to have, Mr. Dillon. Why, I had a line of lightning. Why, now, don't explain it to me, Chester. (laughs) Too hot. Well, I'll go get us some beer. Maybe that'll help. I don't think I want any beer, Chester. Well, then, why don't you just go take a siesta, Mr. Dillon? I'll stay here in the office. (laughs) Why don't you just leave me alone? All right, Mr. Dillon. The marshal. Yeah, what do you want, Doc? A couple of cowboys been feeling their liquor over at the Texas Trail. That's what saloons are for, isn't it? Yeah, they were giving Kitty a bad time. Oh? She got rid of them now. But they're down at the end of Front Street now, making remarks and pestering the town ladies. It just might lead to trouble. Well, I'm not going to walk down there in this heat just to lecture a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. I'll go, Mr. Dillon. Oh, good, Chester. You go, huh? Just tell them to take it easy and leave the ladies alone. Yes, sir, I will, Mr. Dillon. Hey, ladies, you ever been to Texas? Real men down there. Not like these short dress Kansas. <laughs> All right, boys. Now, that's enough. Who's this? A preacher, maybe. (laughs) Boys, Marshal Dillon sent me down here. And we're going to send you right back, fella. Mr. Dillon said you can have all the fun you like, but to leave the ladies alone. That's all dang trouble, these Dodge ladies. They've been left alone too long. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, what they need is a couple of big-handed Texas men. (laughs) Look, now, now why don't you go over there to the Alphaganza? I'll buy you both a beer. You will, huh? Well, that's mighty thoughty of you, mister. We just don't want any trouble, that's all. Sure we don't. And I got an idea how we won't have any. Wait till I get on my horse here. Stay with our friend a minute, Trevor. Hey, mister, uh, I'll make a bet. What kind of bet? What do you mean? Any kind. You name it. Come on. Well, but I don't... I got him! He spilled his gun, Trevor. Pick it up and grab your horse. Yeah. Get this rope off of me. Maybe you'll wear off, mister. You're going for a ride. Drag him. Tobo, drag him. Let's go. I got Chester, Marshal. What? What? Who got Chester? Purple Cowboys. The ropesman dragged him out of town. Come on. What? Well, which way? West. I'm going with you. Hurry. Uh, come on, right. There they are, but they're not dragging anything. They must have cut him loose. Oh, there he is, by that sagebrush. Chester. Chester. Get that rope off his feet, Shadow. Look at him. He's bleeding all over. They tore him to ribbons. I'll stay with him, Marshal, if you'd like to. No, Shadow. Go get our horses, huh? I want to get him back to the dock right away. All right, Marshal. So, Chester. I got you now. We'll be at the docks soon. Easy, Chester. Easy, fella. Easy now. I'll uh, carry him when you get tired, Marshal. I won't get tired, Shiloh. Not for a long time. He's in bad shape, Marshal. The worst is something's bothering his breathing. I don't know what it is. We'll just have to wait and see if it goes away. If he lives the next few days, he'll pull through. Oh, Doc. I I know, I know, I know. I'll stay right here with him. Why did I have to send him? 
Why didn't I go? Oh, I don't blame yourself, I Marshall. told him to go, didn't I? Yes, Bert. Uh, Doc, can, can I talk to him? No, no, Marshal, no. Not for a while. All right, then. Would, would you tell him this for me? I'm going after those men. I'm going to bring them back. Alive. Or at least half alive. <laughs> In the street outside, waves of heat move back and forth, making things seem unreal. Like Chester lying up there at docks. That seemed unreal somehow. I walked down to the jail and I went inside and I sat there for a while. And then all at once I got up and unbuckled my guns and I hung them on a peg behind the desk. And I went over to the Texas Trail. I'm over here, Matt. Sit down. Matt, I heard about Chester. How is he? Doc doesn't know for sure. Oh. They were in here bothering you. Who were they, Kitty? I never saw them before. One was a kind of weasel-faced man named Trevor. And the other? Big man. Real brute. Name's Stobo, I think. I see. What outfit, they say? Would it be the crow track? Yeah. The crow track's holding a herd up the river. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Wait a minute, Matt. Yeah? It's no business of mine to ask, but where are your guns? It would have been easier for Chester if they'd have shot him and killed him. But I don't see... So I'm not going to shoot them. Chester dies, I'll see him hanged. Otherwise... Otherwise what, Matt? I don't know. But I'm going to bring him back and... And we'll wait and see. You're taking an awful chance. Maybe. Oh, Matt. Please be careful. Sure. Uh, kidding? Yeah, Matt. Look in on Chester once in a while, will you? Maybe? Oh, of course I will. Don't worry about him. Thank you, Kitty. So long. Hey, uh, Marshal. What is it, Shiloh? I'll walk outside with you. M Marshal, I want to ride after those cowboys with you. No, Shiloh, I'm going alone. But we could use you here at the jail. Here? I'm going to take two prisoners. I don't know when or how, but I need a jailer when they come in. So I'll bring them in with you, and then I'll... No. Be the... That's something I have to do alone. Marshal, you're a stubborn man. But okay, I'll do it. Keys are in my desk. Uh, here's my horse. I'm going now. Hey, uh, wait a minute, Marshal. You're not armed. I know it, Shiloh. Goodbye. Who's the trail boss here? Where is he? Here I am, and I don't need any riders. Maybe not, but you got two riders I need. How's that? Just what do you want, mister? That's the Crow Track outfit, isn't it? That's right. I'm looking for a couple of your men called Stobo and Trevor. They ain't here, mister. And where are they? They come back this afternoon, picked up the gatherings and left. Didn't even wait to get paid off. I'm telling you this just because they're no good, and I'm glad they're gone. Which way'd they go? I wouldn't tell you if I knew, mister. I didn't think you would. Who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. That's so? <laughs> well, I don't know what you want them for, and I don't care, but... How are you going to take them, Marshal? Put salt on her tail? <laughs> <laughs> you ought to at least take a club if you're going after that stove. He's mean, he's big. Besides being a Texan. <laughs> 
We've hung Texans up here before, mister. Marshal. Yeah. I heard Stobo and Trevitt say they were heading west, following the Arkansas. Where are you from, son? Texas, near Waco. And what are you sniveling around and forming on these men for? That Stobo kicked me. Knocked me down and kicked me. All right, son, I'll ride along the Arkansas. But you ride back to Texas and learn how to fight your own battles. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, the conventions start next Monday when the Republican Party takes over Chicago. CBS Radio's greatest reporting names and a core of technical experts manning mobile units and studios covering the convention floor and corridors are all set to bring you history as never before. Whatever happens, wherever it happens, you'll miss nothing when you tune in the conventions on CBS Radio starting next Monday. Now... The second act of Gunsmoke. I cut straight down to the Arkansas and followed it west. I rode close to the water where I could use the sound of it for only my cover. After an hour or two, I spotted a hobbled horse alone. Stobo and Trevitt must have separated I got down and followed the animal's tracks as best I could in the moonlight until I caught the dying coals of a campfire on the bank ahead. To one side, I could make out the huddled figure of a man asleep in his blanket. It took a long time to crawl to his head where I saw the weasel face of the man Trevitt. His gun belt lay on a saddle blanket in easy reach. I stood up and heaved it out to the river. And as Trevitt sat up with a snap, I kicked him back. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! You sit up again and I'll smash your skull, Trevitt. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Shut up. Now, where's your rope? I told you to lie down. Now, where's your rope? Under my saddle there. You gonna lynch me? No. But you may hang legally if you live that long. Now, keep your arms in that blanket and lie still. While I get you roped up here. Who are you, mister? That'll do it. That's just saying I'm a good friend of a man you dragged out of Dodge this morning. Stobo was in on that, too. It was his idea. He did it. Don't worry. I'll find Stobo. You ain't going to leave me like this. I'll be back. You ain't even carrying a gun. Too bad for you, I'm not. Now, Trevor, I'm going to throw you across my horse and tie you on. He'll take you under Dodge right to the jail. When you get there, tell Shiloh who you are if you can still talk. He'll give you a nice, clean cell. You're the marshal. I'll be back when I find Stobo. You can't do it, marshal. I'll die on that, son. Ride like that across a horse. No, no, listen. Stobo's about a mile up river. We had a row and I left him. See, I, I told you, Marshal. Let me go now. Trevor, how would you like to go to Dodge behind my horse with a rope around you? No, 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 don't, no, no, don't, Marshal. Don't kill me. I'll pack you on now. <laughs> I tied Trevitt across my horse and started him off in the direction of Dodge, and then I forgot about him. Stobo was next. I rode west on Trevitt's horse. Dawn was just breaking when I saw him. Crouched behind a campfire, cooking breakfast. His horse was saddled and stood nearby. I rode straight up, got down, and walked over. You lost, stranger? No. I'm not lost. 
Noble. No tricks, mister. I don't see a gun, but no tricks. Relax, Stobo. I'm unarmed. Who are you? Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Out of Dodge. You're a long way from Dodge, Marshal. Stobo, you and your pal had some fun with a friend of mine yesterday. You hurt him bad. Maybe you killed him. <laughs> you rode out here without a gun to tell me that? You're the craziest marshal I ever saw. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you, Marshal, and bury you in the river. What do you think of that? I expected you would. Huh? But unless you want it on your conscience that you refuse to feed a man on the trail, you better give me a piece of that pork first. You're about the coolest man I ever saw, Marshal. Do I eat? <laughs> sure you do. Sure. You just stand right there across the fire and don't move. I have to shoot you before you've been fed. I know. It's too bad I only got one dish for your last meal, Marshal. A man can keep sassy on meat alone, Stobo. <laughs> yeah, he sure can. Well, looks about done. At least this here piece says you can't... <laughs> All right, I got your gun, Sobo, so don't try anything. You burn me! You burn me! Just a few coals, it won't hurt you. Now shut up and get on your horse. Oh, kill you for this, Marsh! You can't hurt me like that! On your horse! Come on now! Get up there! Now you just sit there, Sobo. I'm gonna throw a noose around your neck, so keep your hands down. There now. Now you ride toward Dodge. And you do anything I don't like, and I'll jerk you off your horse and drag you the rest of the way. And I'll ride. Jail's on the left. You see it? I see it. All right, pull up. Shiloh! Shiloh! Well, hello, Marshal. This other one? Yeah. Private, get here. More dead than alive, but he's here. That was rough, Marshal. Real rough. Yeah. Shiloh, how about Chester? Tell me. Doc ain't sure yet, but he's alive. Lock Stobo up. I'm going over to Doc's. All right, you get down. Walk straight or I'll shoot you through both knees. Chester was asleep, but the doc let me take a look at him. Seemed to me he had more trouble breathing than before. But the doc said another day might see him out of it. And there was nothing I could do. So I went up for a steak and some sleep. And the next morning I went back to the jail. Morning, Marshal. Is everything all right, Shiloh? Doc looked over your prisoners. Trevor's pretty sick yet, but Stobo's all right. Got a few burns is all. Nothing could hurt that moose. A hanging might. Sure, but what if Chester pulls through? You can't hold us in, Marshal. There's no law that says... I don't like the sound of your voice, Trevor. But you can't Be hold Be quiet. Don't worry, Trevor. There's nothing... You too, Stobo. Uh... Shut the door, Shiloh. I don't even want to look at him. Stobo's a mean one, but I feel kind of sorry for Trevor. And go cry about it someplace else. I don't feel sorry. Don't you take it out on me, Marshal. I didn't send Chester off to do my job. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Go get some breakfast, huh, Shiloh? I'll, I'll, I'll wait here now. Uh, I'll be back later. <laughs> Doc? What? Well, what is the doc coming? <laughs> Chester. He's going to be all right. <laughs> you sure? Well, of course, Marshal. His breathing suddenly changed. The pressure's off somewhere. Oh, he's going to be fine. 
<laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> of course, he'll be in some pain for a while yet. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Doc. I'll, I'll come see him in a little while. I'll tell him for you, Mark. All right, come on, Trevor. Where to? Come on, I said. What's up, Marshal? I'll be back for you, Stobo. I'll get going. Come on. <laughs> well, Stobo did it. Not me. You, you can't do anything to Shut me. Shut up. Trevor, your horse is down at the National. Go get on it. You turning me loose? Get your horse and ride, and don't ever come back to Dodge, not while I'm alive. Now, go on before I change my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Sure, I'll go. You're next, Stobo. What you do with Travis? Put a knife in him? I turned him loose. Now, come on, get out of that cell. Am I free to? You will be in a little while. So the doc, Marshal. Just it. Hey, uh, where are you going with Stobo? Going to shoot me in the back, probably. That right, Marshal? I'm going to do what I should have done three days ago when I sent Chester after you. Bring him outside, Shiloh. Let's go, Stobo. Slow and easy. Bring him over here, Shiloh. You're gonna drag me, is that it? You try that. That's what not... you do, isn't it, Stobo? Don't try. Never mind. Shiloh, hold my guns. Here. What the? <laughs> oh, I get it. You're gonna fight me. Well, Marshal, you're crazier than I thought. Why, I'll tear your throat out. If he wins, let him go, Shiloh. Maybe I will. I said you'll let him go. All right, Marshal, all right. Maybe you're crazy, but I guess this is your party. Come on, Marshal. <laughs> I'll make it short for you. Real short. Stand back, everybody. Get back, do you hear? You're big, Stobo. But you're stupid. You're ugly stupid. Why, you... I'll kill you! Give me my guns, Shallow. Here. He don't look too good, Marshal. I'd better get that doc. He's hurt, but he isn't dead. If he can't ride, throw him on a stage. But get him out of here. If I see him again, I'll shoot him. Esther, can, can I come in? Yes, sir, Mr. Gillen. My, what happened to you? I, I've been lecturing a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. One in particular. Oh, I, I see. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. Those two sort of got the drop on you. Yeah, it sure did. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I've been thinking, and, and, uh, yeah, what is it, Chester? Well, Mr. Dillon, I, I, I'm not much help to you here. Maybe I better just... That's uh, enough, Chester. Well, but I, I've been thinking Well, that... just stop thinking. Yes, sir. Now, look, Chester, I'm going to tell you something. I, uh, I, I need you here. You see, you're the only man in Dodge I can really trust. The only one. Yes, sir. 
Well, you you can trust me, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I, and I, I know. And I'm thanking you, Chester. <laughs> but you, you're sure no help to me lying there, you know. No help at all. Well, I, I don't even stay here long. The doc says I'll be up and around again. Look, uh, Chester, I, I, I tell you what, I, I'll go get patched up and then we'll make Kitty come over and fix us some steaks and we'll, we'll have some beer too, huh? Well, what do you say? My, that'd be fine, Mr. Dillon. My, I'd sure like that. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Paul Dubov, Lou Krugman, and Georgia Ellis, with Don Diamond, Gil Stratton, and Jack Crucian. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Dodge City and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. It had been some time since we'd had any real trouble, Anything more than throwing a few juiced-up cowboys in jail to sober up for a few hours. And I liked it peaceful for a change. And I hoped that it stayed that way. Well, that morning I'd gone to take a few catfish out of the Arkansas. When I got back to the office, I found a note from Chester. Saying he's at the Alifraganza having a beer. Hello, John. Over here, Mr. Dillon. Any luck, sir? No, oh, about a dozen, Chester. We'll have them for supper. No, that'll be fine. Oh, I, I, I've been telling Mr. Carter here about you, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Carter? Robert P. Carter. How do you do, Marshal? Hello, how are you? Buy your drink? Well, uh, thank you. Yes, I believe I will. Uh, I think I'll have a beer. Bartender? A beer. Yes, Mr. Sir. Carter came in on the stage from Denver last Saturday. Oh, you live in Denver, Mr. Carter? Oh, heavens no. New York, Marshal. I've only been west a few months, investing money in gold mines and cattle and the like. Mr. Carter's very rich. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, Chester, I will be if Mother Nature holds out. His girl is coming in on the stage today, Mr. Dillon. Oh, is that so? My fiancé, Marshal. He met her in Denver, but she couldn't get ready in time to come here when he did. Ah, I see. I had to come ahead on business. Couldn't wait. We'll take the Santa Fe to St. Louis from here. They're going to be married in St. Louis, Mr. Dillon. Wow. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but is the stage always this late? He's worried, Mr. Dillon, with his girl on the stage and all. <laughs> It'll be a long, Mr. Carter. 
You talking about the stage? Oh, hello, Shiloh. Uh, Shiloh says he's been sitting there by himself all morning, Mr. Dillon. Since last night, Chester. You know something about the stage, Shiloh? Only that it's carrying 50000 in gold out of Leadville. So? Well, maybe that's why it's late. What do you mean, man? Well, if somebody wanted that goal, they'd have to stop the stage long enough to get it unloaded, wouldn't they? Bandits. He means bandits. Now, now hold it, Mr. Carter. You're already bleeding and nobody's shot you yet. Uh, what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just take it easy. The stage will get here, all right. It's off on a little uh, late. But this man says it might have been held up. Why, there may have been a shooting. Well, now, now, he's just daydreaming. That's all. Wait, wait a minute. Listen. Huh? Well, there it is now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, Mr. Carter, there was nothing to worry about. It got here all right. Yes. Yeah. Marshal! Hey, Marshal, come here. What is it, Jim? <laughs> got held up, Marshal. What? Lost 50,000 gold. Where'd this happen? About 20 miles back near Cottonwood Draw, but... Anybody shot? Another shot fired. He tricked it. But James! Marshall, uh... Where's James? What? Driver! Where's the girl who was on this stage? What's happened to her? That's what I started to tell you, Marshal. There's a tree across the road. We got down to move it. This rider got the drop off us. He's all alone. Well, never mind all that. Where's the girl? He took the gold. Took the girl, too. What? He, he took Jane? You mean to tell me you let him take Jane? Well, now, mister, there wasn't much choice. He held a shotgun on us. They're gone before we could do a thing. Oh, but this... This is impossible. Now, take it easy, Mr. Carter. We'll find them. You'll find them? You were off fishing when it happened. What kind of law is there around here, anyway? Easy, Mr. Carter. I took one of the team after, Marshal, but I couldn't get near him. He had an extra saddle horse with him. Put her on that. I see. But I don't think he planned on kidnapping that girl. Where it was, he just looked at her and told her to come along. Did you recognize him, Jim? No. No, his horses are both sorrels. Though. By heaven, Marshal, you'd better get her back here at once, or I'll take this up with Washington. I'll see you disgraced. Shut up, Carter. Chester, go get our horses and a couple of rifles. I'll get a few more details from Jim here. Well, don't you want a posse, Mr. No, there'd be too much shooting around that girl. Now hurry, will you? Yes, sir, I'll hurry, Mr. Dillon. Mark my words. You'd better have Jane back here by nightfall, Marshal. You care to ride along, Mr. Carter? Uh, no. No, I, I'm, I'm not equipped for that sort of thing. I, I'll take care of matters at this end. Yeah. All right, now, Jim, now tell me first exactly what happened. Well, we just come down into the draw about 100 yards from the creek. A blood-red sun was drooping over the edge of the prairie when Chester and I reached Cottonwood Draw. We rode hard until night fell, and then we had to stop and wait for daylight. But with morning, we drew a heavy rain that washed out every track. We rode on anyway. For the next three days, we scouted a big piece of that country. But it was hopeless. Finally, we headed back to Dodge. Empty-handed. Oh, hey, Marshal. Yeah. Get him, Marshal. Bartender, bring me a bottle, will sure, you? Sure, Matt. Where is she, Marshal? Is she all right? Carter, I'm... I'm sorry. What? You mean you didn't find them? Rain washed out their trail first morning. We... We never picked it up again. They... Could be anywhere. You came back without her. We did what we could, Carter. Now we'll just have to wait for word of some kind. You'll be seen sooner or later. Wait. Well, I won't wait. This will cost you your job, Marshal. I promise you that. Look, Carter, if it'd make you feel better, why don't you ride out yourself? It isn't my job to keep the law around here, Marshal. It's yours. Yeah. Hm. Say, Marshal. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, what is it, Shiloh? Big Kate wanted to see you when you got back, asked me to tell you. Big Kate? Oh, all right, thank you. Come in. No luck, eh, Matt? How'd you know, Kate? I can tell by looking at you. It's thousands and thousands of miles at prairie. It'd been just luck if we'd found them. Nobody's blaming you, Matt. 
No. Hey, Carter is. And I suppose it's hard on him. His fiance and all that. Carter's no good, Matt. Well, I never liked him, but I suppose that doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why he's no good. Huh? You know something, Kate? Hmm. Carter's been drunk a lot while you were out. He was bragging to one of the girls last night. Bragging? What? About what? Not much, to my way of thinking. Well, go on. Well, to make it short, seems Jane's father got into a big deal with Carter up in Denver. Yeah. Carter got him tied up good and then threatened to ruin him. Oh, well, so what happened? He didn't ruin him. He took Jane instead. Yeah. Well, maybe she likes him. <laughs> you don't know much about women, do you, Matt? You think a boughten bride is likely to be in love with the man? So that's what I have to bring her back to. Well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> what can I do, Kate? You just have to wait and see what turns up. I waited... I waited a week. Carter was drunk the whole time, telling everybody how he was going to fix me good. But not doing much about it, except to stay out of my way. And things were fairly quiet. Chester and I spent most of our time in the office. Well, he sure fooled me, Mr. Dillon. Now, Carter? Yes, sir. He seemed like such a nice fella. And so rich. He's rich, all right. But poor in spirit. <laughs> You've been going to church again, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon, last Sunday. Oh, last Sunday. Uh, didn't it uh, rain last Sunday? Oh, I like church, Mr. Dillon. But I sure do hate to get all dressed up. <laughs> you the marshal? Yeah, I am. Here you've been looking for a man and a woman. You know anything, mister? My name's Chad Brown. Just rode in from Satana. Yeah? There was a man and a woman about 80 miles back on the trail. What color horses were they on? Well, as soon as they saw me, they rode off, so I didn't get very close. But both horses were the same color. I guess maybe so. Yeah. Are you willing to ride back with me, Mr. Brown? I don't know, Marshal. I've got an awful thirst. That woman's out there against her will. I'll go. I'll get our horses. Uh, no, 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 Chester. Uh, be better if you wait here this time. We'll be back in a few days. With luck. Let's go, Mr. Brown. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, Frank Fontaine now brings you comedy with four members of the Frank Fontaine family, guest stars, and a delightful cast of entertainers. Sunday nights on CBS Radio. Listen in for the Frank Fontaine Show tomorrow night. It's refreshing summer listening. So, just for fun, try the Frank Fontaine Show tomorrow night on CBS Radio. Now, the second act. Of gun smoke. Chad Brown and I covered the 80 miles in a day and a half. The outlaw's trail headed south for a few miles and then turned northeast back in the general direction of Dodge. It was hot and still. On the horizon, there were occasional flashes of heat lightning. And then in the distance, we saw the long, low cloud of yellow dust that spelled cattle. A Texas herd trailing north. The kidnappers' tracks led straight into it, and an hour later, we pulled up not far from the swing of the herd. A line of long horns stretched for several miles across our trail. We watched him, looking for a lag to ride through. All of a sudden, a rider came hallooing down on us. Hold up! Hold up there! Oh, oh boy, oh! You ain't 
ain't aiming to cross that herd, are you? Have you seen anything of a man and a woman around here, mister? Was they mounted? Yeah, a couple of sorrels. It don't matter. I ain't seen nothing but cattle and cowboys for six weeks. Besides, these cattle are plenty uneasy. They've been dry since yesterday morning. And that heat lightning ain't soothing to them. This herd's crossed the trail of an outlaw and a kidnapped woman, mister. That's so. Well, you just have to wait. You can ride around a drog back there. But you can't cut through this herd, mister. Look, I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge, and I haven't got any time to waste. You think we well, can... Well, I pos- sure appreciate your problem, Marshal, but I can't help you. I'm trail boss of this outfit, and I got 3,000 head of cattle here worth maybe $20 a head at Dodge. They're too nervy now, and I sure can't chance you're touching them off by riding through there. I guess he's right, Marshal. Should be pretty risky from the look of them. They're moving too fast now. Yeah, I know. Just that I hate to lose the time. You got more time than I got cattle, Marshal. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But I won't attempt to stampede, mister. We'll ride around the drag. We'll see you in Dodge. The Alifragans are still running? Yeah, it is. Mostly on Texas money. Adios. <laughs> We rode down along the herd and back up the other side, about a four-mile detour. But we picked up the trail again and followed it till dark. Next morning, we found the outlaw still headed straight for Dodge, and all we could figure was that he must be new to the country and just plain lost. Naturally, he'd want to avoid asking questions of anybody. By noon, we were in sight of town, and during the last hour, neither Brown nor I said a word. Finally, we rode up Front Street and got down at the jail. Mr. Dillon? We got him, Mr. Dillon. They rode right in here early this morning. Gave himself up, huh? Yes, sir. I got the man locked up in back, and the money is over at the bank. Oh, good. How's the girl, Chester? Oh, she's fine. A little tired, but fine. Yeah. Well, what's his story? Who is he? He calls himself Scott Cooley, but he won't say anything more at all, Mr. Dillon. I, I just gave up on him. I thought I'd better wait for you. Yeah, all right. I'll talk to him first, and then I want to see the girl. Where is she? I didn't like it, Mr. Dillon, but I didn't see what I could rightly do about it. What do you mean? What happened? Well, she sure didn't want to go with him, but that Mr. Carter came here and just the same as dragged her off. She went finally, but I sure don't like it. Well, they didn't leave Dodge, did they? Oh, no, sir. There's no train till tomorrow there at the hotel. Oh, all right. I'll go over there later, Chester. Yeah, so you're Scott Cooley, huh? You're new around here, aren't you? Well, anyways, I never saw you before, Marshal. Well, I've tried hard enough to meet up with you, Cooley. You're in trouble, you know, bad trouble. Marshal, you've got anything to say, just say it right out. I got nothing to say. I'm just curious why you rode into Dodge, that's all. What do you care? I'm here. You got the money back and... Uh... And What? Oh, leave me alone, Marshal. Just let me alone. You gotta talk sometime. Now listen, Marshal. I'm ready to serve my time. That's why I gave myself up. But talk, no. I don't have to talk. Not for you. Not for anybody else. Mm hmm. All right, Cooley. Have it your way. Marshal. Yeah. Marshal, you. You going to. See, Jane? Yeah. Why? What are you going to see her about? Find out what happened? Yeah. Marshal, I don't suppose you'd let me out of here just long enough to kill Carter. Now, you mean the girl told you about it? I wouldn't care if I hanged for it. It'd be worth it to kill him. Mm -hmm. Tell me something. What makes you think what you did's any better? What? You wouldn't understand, Marshal. But you... uh, You do what you can for her, will you? Anything else you want to tell me? No. 
That's all. Who is it? Matt Dillon. What do you want? Open the door, Carter. I want to talk to the girl. Some other time, Mark. You want me to kick the door open? <coughs> You're asking for trouble, Carter. Uh, how do you do, miss? I'm Marshal Dillon. How do you do, Marshal? I, uh, I know you've been through a lot, miss, but I have to get the whole story from you so as I can file the proper charges against this outlaw, Scott Cooley. You want to use me to put him in prison? Is that it? Well, he's committed two crimes, robbery and kidnapping. We'll want him up for both. Well, doesn't the fact that he gave himself up and, and returned the money help at all? I, I'm afraid I don't gather your drift. Then let it go at that, Marshal. We're leaving Dodge on the next train. So Jane won't be here to testify anyway. No? Is that what you have in mind, Jane? Oh, no. I mean, I don't know. Oh, please. She's upset enough. Marshal, leave her alone. If I want anything out of you, Carter, I'll knock it out. Now, shut up. You can't talk to me like that. Wait. Marshal, I'll, I'll tell you all about it, but first... Yeah? Well, not in front of him. Make him go out, and then I'll tell you. All right, Carter. Outside. Don't you order me around. This is my room. And... I'll throw you. If I open the door and find you around, I'll throw you all the way downstairs. Now get it. All right, now. Jane, you can talk. Can I trust you, Marshal? Really trust you? Well, that's up to you. But I'll tell you this. I know about Carter. About you and Carter, that is. Then you... You know how I hate him. Yeah? But right now, I'm curious about this kidnapping. What happened? Why did Cooley give himself up? Because we decided we... We couldn't live being hunted down the rest of our lives. Ah. So you were in on it with him, huh? No, Marshal. The first time I ever saw Scott Cooley was when he held up the stage. I'd like to believe that. Very simple, Marshal. I love Scott Cooley. What? I love him. Oh, now look, Jane. Girls like you just don't go around falling in love with outlaws. Don't they, Marshal? No, they don't. I did. Then either you're crazy or you're lying to me. And if you weren't a woman, I'd throw you in jail right along with him. I'm a woman, Marshal, but I've no objection to going to jail with Scott. Oh, then you admit you're his accomplice. No. I suppose it's hard for you to understand, Marshal. It is. Well, I'll try to make it simple. You see, Scott doesn't know why he took me with him when he held up the stage. He's never done anything like that before. It just seemed perfectly natural to him. He saw something he wanted and he took it. That's all. Well, I'm afraid the court will look at it somewhat differently. Well, I, I suppose he'll go to prison for the holdup, but, but not for kidnapping. Why not? Because I'll testify that I went with him of my own free will. I almost wish you two hadn't ridden back to Dodge. Marshal. Yeah. You said you know about Bob Carter and me. Yeah. Well, Scott's been wild and, and he's done wrong, but but he's never done anything really evil. Well, maybe you're better off with cooling. If he straightens out. You know I am. Don't you, Marshal? It's no business of mine. I, I'm a peace officer and not a matchmaker. My job's to keep Cooley under arrest and get him up for trial. And that's all. Now, what you do is your own business. You can testify any way you like. I, I can't stop that. Oh, please. Marshal, help me. There's no one else who can. Yeah, who is it? It's Carter. Open this door. Huh. Well, gentlemen, 
There are four of us here, Marshal. We figure you've talked to Jane long enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have, Mr. Carter. You're leaving. Yeah, yeah, we're leaving. Are you ready, Jane? Oh, thank you, Marshal. Yes, I'm ready. Jane isn't going with you. I've just put her under arrest. Under arrest? I arrest anybody I think needs arresting, Mr. Carter, and I'm not in the habit of explaining why. There's a law about that, You're in Dodge, Mr. Carter. Come along, Jane. You can't do this, Dylan. We won't stand for it. Ah, you're a fool, Carter. I know these three bums you got with you, and they don't want to draw on me any more than you do. You fed them some liquor and promised them more. For that, they'll do anything, anything but face me in a gunfight. Am I right, boys? Huh? Huh? Well, I take it I am. All right, now get out of my way. Uh, you go first, Jane. You stay here, Jane. Take your hands off her, Mr. <laughs> Just step over him, Jane. Dylan, I don't like to say anything. Well, then don't, Chester. But I can't help it, Mr. Dillon. This is the first time you've ever jailed a woman, and I just don't like it. <laughs> Good. What? I don't like it either, Chester. What's this all about, Mr. Dillon? Chester, Jane and Cooley are in love. My... Don't look so dewy-eyed about it. Cooley's got to stand trial yet, you know. I want no part of this, Marshal. Now what, Shiloh? I never did like that, Carter. Well, what's he up to? Oh, uh, sir, he's drunk and he's buying liquor for everyone. He's making a lot of talk. There's about 20 men with him now. Where? Texas Trail. Nobody likes it about this girl. Looks like they'll come over here and try to bust her out of jail. <laughs> Chester. Yes, sir? Those horses still out back. Yes, sir. I was going to put them away later. No, leave them. Leave them. Uh, now, will you get over to the Texas Trail and stall those men for a while? Huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Come on, Shiloh. Not me. I'm going to bed. I got two drunk last night. Got the worst head on. Cooley? Yeah? Come on up. What is this? Just Martin? hurry it up, will you? Let's go, Jane. Oh, no, no. Stay where you are, Jane. I don't You'll do like what this. I tell you, Cooley. It's all right, Scott. We can trust him. Yeah, but I don't know what he's Scott. got. Well. All right, Jane, if you say so. All right, now I'll back. Yeah, that way. Now, come on, let's move. All right, you take the gray horse, Jane. He's gentle enough. But hurry, will you? Come here. Come on, boy. Where are we going, Marshal? We're going to Hayes City. Cooley's going to stand trial there. Yeah. They got the money back, Scott. They can't do much to you. I know. But there's that, that kidnapping, too. I won't testify. That's all. Jane, you're going to have to testify. You'll be in... Contempt of court if you refuse. Then I'll lie. Anyway, I did go of my own free will. After a while, anyway. That's perjury. But you don't have to do that either. There's an easier way. How? Oh. Well, before I deposit Cooley in the Hayes City Jail, we might just make a little stop. What do you mean, Marshal? Stop where? We, uh, we're going to stop at the preacher's. You know, a married woman can't testify against her husband. God. God. <laughs> Come on, honey, let's ride. Gunsmoke. Transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. 
Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were John Stevenson, Larry Dobkin, and Patricia Walter, with Mary Lansing, Herb Ellis, Jonathan Hole, Jim Nusser, and Frank Gerstel. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. <laughs> Dodge City and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. West with Young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Hey, all you pretty travelers, you listen to me. You gotta get welcome to Dodge City proper like. Hey, you there, mister. I said you. You addressing me, sir? I reckon I am. You a preacher? Not exactly. You dress like a preacher. If you'll excuse me. Back up, fancy pants. If you ain't no preacher, I figure I'm making you dance some for the folks. You think you can hoorah me? Dude, I said dance. Dance or the next shot will take off one of your toes. I don't think I'd like that. Doc, no. All right, so I'm put up the gun. Marshal, you got a wild and woolly town here. Marshal, you move aside. I'm going to make this grinning dude kick up his heels for us. I'd say that might be quite a trick, Thorne. Unless he's changed a lot since I last met him. Have you, Doc? Not for the good, Matt. <laughs> I was afraid. For you pacey face tender foot. I said for Shut you... Shut up, Thorne. He's drunk, Doc. He's dead. You just don't know it yet. I'll take it good if you'd meet me later at my office. All right, Matt. To you. Well, that's sure a lot of talk. Now I'm going to shoot that dude's boot heels. Fire one shot and I'll pistol whip you, Thorne. What's that? You're kind of forgetting who's holding a gun, ain't you? I wasn't forgetting. Oh, my wrist. You broke my wrist. I doubt it. Now let's go to jail. Oh, you can't put me in jail. I'm Thorne Finley. Move. Oh, you wait like hell, Big Jack, about this. And I will, too. Do that. He might be grateful to me for saving your neck. You pulled some fool stunts, Thorne, but you've never been closer to dying than just a minute ago. You mean from that fancy pants? Oh, I could handle six like him. That makes you a lot of men. I can name a dozen pretty good gun hands who can't handle one of it. What? That's Doc Holliday. <laughs> Salute, Matt. Salute, Doc. That sounds worse, Doc. Yeah, I got orders to go to Arizona. <coughs> Air's dry there, better for my lungs. Going? Thought I might. Wyatt invited me to visit him. He and Virgil and Morgan of the law down there. Some little mining town called Tombstone. <laughs> well, it sounds peaceful anyway. If it isn't, it will be by the time White Herb gets through. He is the peacemakingest man I ever met outside of you. <laughs> Matt, who was the teller head down at the depot anyway? No, oh, Thorne. He's just a spoiled kid. Kid? Couldn't be much younger than you. Sure, but Thorne never grew up. His father has coddled him and protected him and gotten him out of scrapes ever since he was a pup. He's never had to be a man. Not with Big Jack Wetner, isn't he? Big Jack. 
Big Jack Finley. Oh, you know him? I've heard of him. Well, that figures. He owns about half of Kansas. Star in a box runs more cows than he can count. Swings a lot of weight and dodge. Yeah, too much. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, somebody said that Doc Holliday had come into town today and he... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's all right, Chester. Why don't you shake hands with him? Don't mind if I shake with my left hand. It's kind of habit. Yeah, I know. Mr. Dillon has the same habit. He would. How about dinner tonight, Matt? Sure, sure. <coughs> How long will you be in Dodge? Not long. <coughs> <coughs> Just till I finish a chore. Uh-huh. That, uh, chore have anything to do with Big Jack Finley? Might say so. It's gonna kill him. Turn him loose. You, uh, forgot to close the door, Mr. Finley. You're going to turn my boy loose? Or I'm going to have to do it for you. You got a writ of habeas corpus? Writ? Thorn didn't commit no crime. The charges are drunk and disorderly, disturbing the peace, and attempted assault with a deadly weapon. I was. You still need a writ. But man, Judd and Nathan does what I say, and you know it. Don't you think I can get a writ? I'm sure you can and will. You always do. Then what's the point, Dylan? It's just a lot of useless red tape. It's the law. <laughs> Close the door on the way out. All right, Thorne. Didn't I tell you Big Jack would get me out? When are you going to learn you can't play? save the speech? The law can't touch a Finley. You ought to get smart, Marshal. Like you? Sure, like me. Hi, Big Jack. You okay, son? Fine. Anything else, Mr. Finley? Why, yes. Uh, uh, my boy here is a little boisterous sometimes. I know. High-spirited, you understand? Uh-huh. So? So, I want to put a stop to all this nonsense of yours, arresting him every time he kicks up his heels a bit. Now, go on. Well, I'm offering you a job. Let's say, protecting my interests. Two hundred a month. And no work, naturally. <laughs> I see we understand each other perfectly. No work, of course. All I have to do is just shut my eyes whenever Junior here breaks the law, huh? I said we understand each other. There's no need to elaborate on it, Dylan. There's a big need. Only how do I explain to a person like you that some men don't wear a price tag? Huh? How do I explain how I feel about a so-called respectable citizen making the law his private doormat? <clears throat> hey, you're nothing but the stupid gunman I've always thought you were. I understand you took the part of Doc Holliday against my son. I kept Thorne from committing suicide, yeah. And you sided with a notorious killer against an important citizen of this community. Now I'm telling you, Dylan. Holiday. I don't want him in Dodge tomorrow. Doc may be a gunfighter, but he's clear with the law, Finley, and a better man than your son will ever be. What? Why, I... That hurts, doesn't it? You... I'm serving notice, Marshal. You run that killer out of Dodge City... Or I'll do it myself. Big Jack Finley. Cattleman and self-made king of southern Kansas. No better or worse than most of the men carving empires out of the west. Until love for his son blinded him to the fact that Thorn Finley had gone bad. And from here on I knew the war was on between Big Jack and me. So Big Jack Finley's going to run me out of town, huh? No. Yeah. Unless I do it first. Oh? I do something naughty, Matt? Well, you threaten a man's life. Oh, <laughs> that. <laughs> and just between friends, Matt. Anything else, Doc? Not murder. Murder? I can give him an even break. Uh, with you, that's still murder. Uh, don't you think you better tell me about it? Mm hmm. What if I don't tell you? Now yeah, then, my job's to warn Finley and try to protect him. You're a tough man to be friends with, Matt. It applies to you, too, doesn't it? 
guess maybe it does at that. Didn't realize I put you on the spot by spouting off my good intentions. Sorry. Oh, forget it, forget it. <coughs> you want to talk to me? <coughs> All right. Remember a girl named Ruth Davis? Mm-hmm. Died in a riding accident a few months ago. Always wondered if it wasn't suicide. She lost her brother two weeks before that. No accident. No suicide. You sure? Sure. You know, Ruth and her brother ran the ranch alone. Mm -hmm. A man started pestering Ruth, and she hated him. Her brother kicked the man off the ranch. This fellow dry gulfed Ruth's brother, made it look like a robbery. You have any proof of this? Yeah. Ruth was afraid to go to the law, so she sent a letter to me. Here, read it yourself. She says the man was Finley and says she expects him to try and shut her up for good. Well, that doesn't mean it's Big Jack. I went to see Ruth's folks. They had her belongings. Among them, I found this. Hmm. Watch chain. Engraved J.F. on the clasp. Jack Finley. You see why I've got to kill him, man? He forced Ruth's horse over that cliff, sure. But do you still think she died accidental? No. But who's responsible is something for a court to decide. Court? With Finley's money and influence, he wouldn't spend five days in jail even if he was convicted, which he wouldn't be. He doesn't own the court. Maybe not, but it's still the most powerful man in the state against a dead girl whose only friend is Doc Holliday. How do you think a judge will decide? Doc, I'm going to ask you a favor. Make it one I can give. I got an idea, but uh, you must let me handle it my way. Give the law a chance. All right, Matt, I can wait. Thank you. I'll keep this letter in chain for a while. All right, but if the law fails, I'll brace Big Jack Finley when he walks out of the courthouse. And you'll be bracing two men, Doc. Finley and me. <laughs> Looks like it'll be a fine day. Well, you're up kind of early just to bring me a weather report, aren't you, Judge Nathan? Huh? Oh, well, I I want to see you. Uh, go right ahead. You mind if I finish shaving? No, no, please do. Uh, just thought I'd chat with you about the... Uh, Dr. Finley? Uh-oh. Uh, yes. It seems that Big Jack's very upset by your attitude. I'm not surprised. Feels you're a little rough on his boy. I am. But then his boy's a little rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, perhaps Thorn is high spirited, like uh, yesterday. Yesterday he was just plain high. <laughs> Tell me, Judge Nathan, how do you like being on Fenley's payroll? Uh, what? You know, you used to be a pretty decent person. Oh, hey, you can't talk to me like Yes, I can. I'm sending a copy of Thorne's record to the governor. Governor? And with it, I'm sending a list of the writs you've issued to get him out of jail and a copy of the court records. I've only tempered my justice with mercy, that's all. Thorne's been arrested for 18 offenses, convicted of 10, spent no time in jail, and paid a total of $15 in fines. I'd say you've been very merciful. Um... You said you were sending this to the governor. You haven't actually mailed it yet? No. You got an out. Uh, not that I don't feel justified in any decisions I've made, but uh, such a report might cause undue talk at the Capitol. And ruin your political hopes. Well, my conditions are simple. Get off Finley's payroll now. Very well. And give me cooperation from here on, no matter who's involved. Do that and I shelve the report. I'll do it. Mr. Dillon, trouble to make it. What kind of trouble, Chester? It's Big Jack Finley, Mr. Dillon. He's rounding up his crew at the Alifraganza. They're going to ride Doc Holliday out of town on a rail. Did you cut yourself shaving? <laughs> We will return for the...
the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, don't forget, starting Monday, CBS Radio's tremendous news staff will start bringing you the complete coverage of the Democratic Convention in Chicago. As you found during the Republican Convention, CBS Radio never misses. So, starting Monday, stay with CBS Radio all day and evening for the Democratic Convention. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Wake up, Doc. It's Matt. Oh. What's up? Trouble. Lots of trouble. Big Jack Finley's organizing a little citizens committee of his own hand-picked men coming to escort you out of town. On a rail? Yeah, that's the general idea. Here, take a shotgun. Yeah, I'll hide it under the covers, modest-like. I'll wait against the wall here. Good. That'll put him in a crossfire. If it comes to that. There's enough of them. We're in a spot. Yeah, likely we are. You're risking your neck to save me some bruises. One I owe you, friend Matt. It's my job. Still one I owe you. There he is. Wrap him up. All right, stop right there. I'll shoot the man who takes another step. You think you're going to stop us, Dylan? I think so. Me and Doc. Doc. Show him, Doc. Sure thing, Marshal. Look, boys, surprise. Hey, I sure do love surprises. Dylan, I've got a dozen men with me. Well, sure, about six of them will die, Finley, if you don't crawl out of here fast. And guess who'll die first, Big Jack? You there, Moncrief. I always figured you for some brains. Get your boss out of here, quick. Sure talking sense, Big Jack. Shut up, Moncrief. You showing yellow. Oh, but man, there's nothing here for us to die over. Listen to him, Finley. That greener Doc is holding has 18 buckshot in each barrel. He'll get slaughtered if he triggers that thing. And I'm getting edgy, Finley. And me, if I get a coughing spell, I'm liable to shoot without meaning to. All right, all right. <laughs> this is twice you have made a Finley back down. You'll never get a third chance. Let's get out of here. Matt, when are you going to arrest him? When I'm ready. Not long. I hope not. Getting impatient to see that man dead. your message, Marshal. I hope it's important. It is, Moncrief. How long you been foreman for Big Jack? Fifteen, sixteen years. You know him pretty well. Would he be the kind to kill a girl? No, of course not. Because he'd kill a man if he got mad enough, but he wouldn't kill no girl, Marshal. Well, I have proof that he did. A girl and her brother, but it doesn't set right. I'm hoping you can help. What's your proof, Marshal? A letter that names Finley as the man. Ruth Davis wrote it before she died. Ruth Davis. And this watch chain was found with her belongings. It's engraved on the back. I know. I uh, was with Big Jack when he bought this chain in Chicago. It was right after his wife died. Big Jack wore it all the time? Mm. You uh, rode the right hunch, Marshal. What? Thorne is your man, just like you figure. He had a yen for the Davis girl, but he kept it quiet. Because he didn't want it known, she throwed him over. But the watch chain... Big Jack gave that to Thorne on his 25th birthday. Whole ranch can testify to that. Mm. Good. All right, thank you, Moncrief. You, uh, going to try and arrest Thorne? Why? If Big Jack believes Thorne killed that girl, it'll break his heart. Broke her neck. If he don't believe it, then he'll protect Thorne. And, Marshal, there's not enough lawmen in the state of Kansas to make Big Jack give up his son. Yeah? 
Yeah, what did... Oh, it's you, Marshal. And, uh, John Holliday. Doc, this is Judge Nathan. Uh, huh? Holliday? Oh, yes, I've heard of you. I've heard of you, too, Judge. Wonder which has heard the worst. Uh uh-uh. uh. What's that? Uh, why, I, uh. Judge, I'm here on business. Oh, of course. Uh, come in, won't you? In my study here, so we won't be disturbed. Now, what is it, Marshal? I want you to swear out a warrant for Thorn Finley's arrest. Charge murder. <laughs> You want to go with me, Doc? I'm sure. <coughs> All right, hold up your right hand. Oh, no, Matt, you wouldn't make me a llama. If you go, you go as my deputy. I'm not letting you make this a private fight. And with my friends, if they hear I wore a star. All right, Matt, it's your show. You swear to uphold and enforce the laws of this community, the state of Kansas, and the United States, to the best of your ability, as Deputy Marshal, so help you, God. All of that? All of that. I swear. Here, put on this badge. All right, man. You know, I'm feeling this badge is going to cramp my style something terrible. Is going up through this pass. We still got a good ride ahead. How far? Oh, about ten miles. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Matt? Will they fight? Well, Being smart, Dylan. Green will drop you if you touch a gun butt. You're handy at this bushwhacking, aren't you, Thorn? If Doc He's has... all right. My slug seems to have bounced off his thick skull. Good. Yeah, let's pull your teeth. Now, better you do it. With your left hand, reach down and across slow. Pull your gun out with your fingertips and toss it away. Nervous. Just cautious. Or maybe this queen doesn't exist, huh, Thorn? Queen! Queen's one of Dad's men, but uh, I pay him extra to work for me. Any more questions? I guess not. There's my gun. The rifle next. I, uh... I got a pen knife in my pants pocket. You know why Holiday came to Dodge? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you do. You wouldn't be riding with him. Well, he's not going to tell any stories to my dad or anyone else. Uh, you can't kill us, you stupid. Not planning on killing you. And what have you got planned? A queen's kind of a magician. He's going to make Holiday just disappear. Folks won't care much about one of his kind. I would. I'd care so much I'd hang you for it. No. No, with Holiday gone, it's your word against mine. And you won't be able to approve a thing, Dylan. You sure of that? I'm sure. Otherwise, I'd take care of you along with Holiday. Now, get out and start walking back to town. It's like I told you. Law can't touch a Finley. <laughs> There was no time for heroics, so I walked. When I reached a turn, I cut back through the rocks, but it was too late. They were gone. And with them, the horses, guns, and Doc Holliday. Two miles up the road, I found my horse turned loose. And with a mind full of cold hate, I raced onto the star in a box. On the front porch of the ranch house, I saw a big jack men. Hold it right there. Out of my way, mister. I'm in no mood to shake hands. Where are you heading, law man? You don't hear well. Hey, Dylan. 
Where's Holiday? Friend? How should I know? Get off my ranch. And where's that prize son of yours? What? Trot him out. I want him. Do you now? What on earth for? Thorn, put that gun away. Oh, no. This is just in case the marshal loses his temper. I've lost it, Junior. Sure. Dylan, I've had all I'm going to stand from you. You just think you have. Where's Holiday, Thorn? Where'd Queen take him? Holiday? Why, I haven't the faintest idea. Where is Queen, Dad? The righty fence line, but... Gee, Marshal, we don't know where your friend is. You're under arrest, Thorn. What's that? Ask him to show the warrant. Here. Read it, Finley. Oh, oh no. No, th th that's not possible. The judge wouldn't issue a warrant without proof. He has proof, Thorn. This is a lie. Thorn couldn't be guilty of murder. No. Take a look at his face. Son. Daddy's trying to frame me. D don't let him get away with this. No, I won't. I won't. Get out, Dylan. Man, open your eyes. This is not going to help. You heard me. I don't believe you, your warrant, or your proof. I believe my son. So get off this ranch. Get out of the state. You let me see you again, so help me, I'll kill you myself. Forget me, you're back in the law, you can't. I'm in do my own law. You so do I. Doc Holliday. You're, you're supposed to be dead. Queen was supposed Queen's to be the one who's dead. I carry a knife in my boot just for men like him. Thorn. God help me. You are guilty. He sure is. And if he knows any prayers, he'd better get them over with. No, Doc. He goes back with us as our prisoner. You're wrong, Marshal. I'll take care of my son. Dad. Dad no. You rock Stay back. lying murderer. Please, oh, please don't. I that. should have strangled Stay you. Stay away from you. Stay away from you. Stay away from you. Manley, look out. I threw myself at Fenway and Buck, but set the paw running away from Thorn as he raised his gun to fire. Then in the doorway, the blood stained, terrible figure of Doc Holliday went into action. His pale hands blurred over his hope. The Ruth Thorn! Uh, Ruth? Holiday. Thanks, Chester. You sure you won't stay around a while, Doc? Yeah, we're good friends, man, but you're a peace officer. I guess I'm not a very peaceful man. <laughs> you could be, Doc. <laughs> no, I'm not going to change, and you shouldn't. Law needs men like you. No, if I stayed there, there's too good a chance I might cross you. Yeah. Then I'd have to meet you over gun barrels, and it's one thing I'm afraid of. So long, man. Good luck, Doc. My. I never would have thought Doc Holliday was scared of meeting anyone in a gunfight. Hmm. You don't understand, Chester. Doc's afraid because he might beat me. Mm -hmm. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Herb Purdom, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Harry Bartell as Doc Holliday, with Lee Millar, Nestor Piva, Ralph Moody, and Tom Tully. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke.
Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. <laughs> Jeannie, what's the matter? Good morning, Miss Wells. Good morning, Chester. Matt, I've got to talk to you. Sure. Uh, Chester? Uh, you folks will have to excuse me. I can't be puttering around the office all day. I'll be in the back if you want me. Yeah? Matt, he's here in Dodge City. I just saw him. He came in on the morning train. You mean Ed Beaudry? Yes. It's been four years, Matt. I'd begun to hope he'd forget. Hope he wouldn't find us. From what you've told me, Beaudry doesn't sound like a man who ever forgets. He's come here looking for Bert. To kill him, he swore he would. Matt, what are we going to do? I don't know. What's Bert think about it? He doesn't know yet. He's busy at the blacksmith shop. Ma Matt, you've got to help us. You're the only real friend we have out here. It might make it easier if I weren't, Jeannie. I'm supposed to maintain law and order and dodge. That's my job. Doesn't leave much leeway to mix in on personal quarrels. Well, there's no quarrel. It's just that Ed Beaudry's a hot-tempered fool. Bert never did anything to him. He married you, didn't he? A woman has a right to change her mind, Matt. Maybe Beaudry doesn't think so. Matt, you... You promised me once in Louisville... Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, Jeannie, go on home and uh, don't say anything to Bert. I'll talk to Beaudry. Thank you. I'll never forget it. I... Goodbye, man. Chester. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll be right there, Mr. Dillon. Did Ms. Wells leave? Yeah. Fine couple of Wellses. Did you know them before they came out west? Uh, not Bert. I knew Mrs. Wells. I guess we better drop over to the Texas Trail, Chester. There's a fellow in town planning to do some killing. <laughs> a long time. Are you kidding? Hello, Chester. Miss Kitty? Uh, come sit down, Matt. Tell me about things. I can't right now, Kitty. We're looking for a fellow. Thought he might have come in here. Sooner or later, they all do. Stranger, Matt? Uh, yeah. He came in on the morning train. His name's Ed Beaudry. Oh, him? There. The bar, Matt. Third from the end, next to Tulsa Jim Nixon. He's buying Irish whiskey for everybody. Thank you, Kitty. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Watch yourself, Max. Yeah, sure, Kitty. I'll see you later. All right, bartender. Set up another round of Jamesons for the house. Your name, Beaudry? Oh, that's right, mister. Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal here. I'd like to talk to you. Fine. Go ahead and talk. Uh, Tulsa, suppose you'll move on down the bar for a couple of minutes, huh? Oh, well, now, uh, dear Marshal, this man's a friend of mine. You're not very particular about your friends. Now, go on, Tulsa. Drift. Mr. Beaudry, you, uh, you came here to kill Bert Wells, didn't you? Did I? Well, here's some advice. Don't do it. Take the next train and get out of town. Is that official? Just what's the charge, Marshal? None. Yet. Murder, if you go through it. Oh, not the way I understand it. Murder's one thing. Calling a man in a fair fight, that's another thing. Beaudry, I'm the law here in Dodge, and I don't see it as a fair fight. Bert's a blacksmith, and he's not used to handling a gun. You are. And so I'm told. Who told you, Marshal? I don't know anybody here. And... Wait a minute. Dylan? Yeah. I heard Jeannie mention you. 
You knew her back in Louisville before she ran off. We'll leave her out of this, Puddy. So that's it. This isn't official. You're just doing a personal favor for an old friend. Probably a very close friend. Jeannie always did have a weak. I warned you once. (laughs) All right, hold it. Now get up, Baudry. That was a mistake, Dylan. Now I'd have to kill you, too. I'm not a blacksmith, Baudry. I'll look you up just soon as I've finished with Bert Wells. If you kill Bert, you won't have to look me up. See you come in. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, Bert. About what, Matt? Ed Baudry's in town. Baudry? Well, it was bound to happen sometime. Has he been bothering Jeannie? No, she just happened to see him get off the train this morning. She came and told me. She shouldn't have done it, Matt. It's not your problem. Maybe it is, Bert. I'm the law in Dodge, and the law doesn't like the idea of personal grudges ended up in a killing. What do you aim to do? Yeah, prevent it if I can. Well, I wish you luck. You haven't worn that gun for two years, Bert. Why start now? I've got no choice, Matt. You know that. You mean you got no chance. Now, if you let Baudry call a showdown, he'll kill you. Maybe. Look, Bert, why don't you take to the prairie, hold up for a week or so while I figure some way of running Baudry out of town, huh? Would you do it, Matt? Hide out and let somebody else do your fighting for you? Well, what I'd That's do is... That's beside the point, Bert. Jeannie. There's a law against killing. And it's Matt's job to enforce it. If you went away, there wouldn't be any fight. Wouldn't be much honor either, Jeannie. Man can't run and still call himself a man. He can run from a mad dog. And that's what Ed Baudry is. He never had any claim on me. It appears he thought he did. Matt, you know where Baudry stand? I talked to him in the Texas Trail. He probably took one of the rooms upstairs. Like to walk over there with me? Well, if that's the way you want it. No, Bert, you... you... I'll get my hat. Be right with you. Matt, you've got to stop it. Yeah? How? I don't know. But there must be something you can do. Yeah, there is. Boy, it's shaping up. I can probably arrest the survivor. There's still time to turn back, Bert. Afraid not, Matt. Should have had it out with Baudry back there in Kentucky five years ago. Jeannie wanted to run away and avoid trouble, and she was so beautiful it was hard to argue with her. Yeah, I know. Be hard on her if anything happened to you. Life's always hard on a woman, I guess. Worse out here on the prairie. Look out for her, Matt, in case I... Well, I mean, if anything... Mr. Dillon? Huh? Oh, what is it, Chester? Boat, we left the saloon a little while ago. Went over to the livery stable to hire a horse. Oh? Huh? I think he's riding out to your place, Mr. Wells. He's been doing a lot of talking. Jeannie will be there alone, Matt. I better get back home. It won't be necessary. Here comes Baudry now. I won't draw unless he does, Matt. Heads up, Chester. Yes, sir. Just riding out to call on you, Wells. I decided you'd had plenty of time to look me up. No reason to, Baudry. Most men would figure they had reason. 
Somebody been in a local saloon? Telling their wife's history? What? Boudry, you... All right, hold it. Don't draw, Bert. Chester, cover Boudry. Just keep your hands still, Mr. Boudry. You're fast with that gun, Dylan. Fast enough, Mr. Boudry. You make Baudry. a good bodyguard. Too bad you can't ride her 24 hours a day. I told you what to expect if you keep pushing this thing, Mr. Boudry. Now use some sense and get out of town while you're still alive. I've been in lots of towns, Dylan. I left them all alive. Wells, I've been planning to kill you for five years. Plans don't always work out. Listen, Will. You got till sundown. After that, I'm going to shoot you on sight. All right, Mr. Baudry, if you've finished speaking your piece, move along. Why, surely, Mr. Dillon. See you later. Well, still a couple of hours before sundown. I think I'd like to spend them with Jeannie. I'll see you, Matt. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Bert. I declare, I, I just can't see any way of stopping it, Mr. Dillon. I can't either. I'd sure hate to be in Bert Wells' shoes. I'd hate worse to be in Baudry's. He'll never submit to arrest. Chester, I'm going to have to kill him. <laughs> Why don't you relax, Matt? You're nervous as a cat. Yeah, and I'll stay nervous, Kitty, until I find out what's happened to those two. Baudry slipped out the back way just at dusk. The piano player saw him. Yeah. Well, Bert pulled the same trick. I had a couple of boys watching the blacksmith shop, but he managed to give them a slip. There's nothing you can do now, Matt. Uh, Another killing. And you in the middle again. Why, Matt? Why do you do it? It's a job, Kitty. Somebody's got to do it. But why you? There are other things in life if you look around for them. Well, maybe I will someday. Will you look my way, Matt? Well, Matt, I... I brought my kit. I'm all prepared. Ah, uh, where are the victims? No victims yet, Doc. You're jumping the gun. Well, I understand it's going to be a real showdown. The boys at the bar are offering two to one on Baudry. That's about the odds, I figure, if the shooting really starts. Oh, it'll start, all right. Oh, and there's not a thing in the world can stop it. Dill? Chester, what are you doing in here? I told you to watch that street. Yes, sir, I know you did. The fight's as likely to start out there as any place else. No, sir, Mr. Dillon. I guess there's not going to be any fight. What? They just found Baudry lying in an alley down the block. Matt. Somebody sneaked up behind him with a hammer. He's sure dead. We'll return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, what is the connection between the statue in the square and a pair of thugs who are definitely not on the square with the law? Tonight on Gangbusters, hear the complete details of this exciting case taken from actual police files. Remember, it's Gangbusters later tonight on most of these same CBS radio stations. Don't miss it. Now... The second act of Gunsmoke. Showing around the house, Mr. Dillon. No. Not the shop either. He might have skipped out. Well, what about his wife, though? I don't know, Chester. I can't figure any of this. It's not like Bert to pull a sneaking trick like that. Hold it. Don't move. He 
trees there by the tree, Chester. Yes, sir. Bert. Who is it? Who's that? Matt. Chester's with me. You better put away the gun. All right, Matt. I thought it was somebody else. Who, Bert? We. You know who, Baudry, of course. Guess I better take your gun. Official, Matt? Official. Well, I got no quarrel of the law. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Now, why did you do it? What do you mean? If it had been a gunfight, the law couldn't have touched you. Now, the circumstances are all in your favor. But this way they'll call it murder, and they'll be right, because that's what it was. Matt, what are you talking about? It's no use. You left the hammer lying right beside his body. It's got your shop brand carved in the handle of it. Whose body are you talking about? You mean Baudry? Yeah, sure, Baudry. Matt, you're making a mistake. I went looking for Baudry, yes, but I didn't find him. And I come back here. I was afraid to leave Jeannie there in the house alone, I didn't do it, Matt. You're wrong. It's not up to me, Bert. It's the court's job. All I can do is take you in. The evidence is too strong, and I got no choice. No choice. I didn't have a choice either. We must have had a choice somewhere back down the line. When? Where was it we could have stopped and turned back? I'm a marshal, not a philosopher. Now, let's go. What about Jeannie? I gotta tell her. Chester will take care of it. It'd be better if you'd do it, Matt. You're a friend. That'd make it easy. I'd rather not if you don't mind. Now, come on, let's go. All right, Bert, step inside. Four years we've been friends, Matt. I never thought it would come to this. Neither did I. You said you didn't find any money on him. It could have been robbery. I made to look like robbery. But either way, there's nothing I can do. Now, you better step inside. I'll, uh, I'll bring you some blankets and tobacco. If you want anything else, let me know. Wish I knew how Jeannie was taking it. She'll be all right. She's a fine girl. Matt. Matt, look out for her, will you? Bert, a man's job is one thing, friendship's another. This prairie country is rough and tough and wild at the best. And without the law, nobody could survive in it. And that means putting friendship aside sometimes. The man still doesn't forget. Yeah, I... I'll look out for her. Thanks, Matt. I'll see you later. Well, you get your prisoner tucked in safely, Matt. <laughs> what about Baudry? He's dead. Absolutely dead. Like they never saw anybody any deader. Blacksmith Hammond makes a mighty fine weapon. Yeah, at least for sneaking up behind. I can't figure Bert doing that. It's not like him. Sometimes a man changes under pressure, Doc. Yeah, I can't figure it either. What would you say his chances are? Bad. Straws all point one way. Hmm. Maybe somebody's been messing with the straw stack. Oh. Yeah, that's a good question, man. Well, the court will ask it. Yeah, if he ever gets there. What do you mean? I just come from Texas Trail a while ago, and some of the boys are kind of riled up. They're talking real loose. No law against talking. Yeah, doubt if they aim to leave it at talking, Matt. They figure the evidence is a little on the weak side. A court might turn Bert loose. So they're saying it's up to them. Yeah, they're just mad because they've lost their source of free drinks. Well, maybe so, but... You better keep your eyes open, Matt. Yeah, I know that pack, Doc. They hunt in the dark and pull down stragglers. And mostly they just talk. So don't worry. Bert's in jail, and that's where he's going to stay. 
I don't want to see Bert. No visitors after dark. It's a jail rule. Rules don't have to be enforced. Mine do. Bert's a prisoner, same as any other prisoner. He's charged with murder. He didn't do it, Matt. It's not for me to say. But you know he didn't. You know Bert. You know he wouldn't do a thing like that. Sneak up behind a man's back in the dark. I'm not the court, Jeannie. I know. And they'll believe he did it. Yeah, the night train's coming in. Hope it's not bringing in trouble. The morning train did. Matt, I want to see Bert. I told you that you... Why, you little fool. <laughs> Give me the gun, Jeannie. No, I warn you, Matt, stay Give back. Give me the gun. No, Matt. So help me, I I'll... said hand it over. <laughs> You knew I wouldn't shoot. Yeah. <laughs> now, what did you hope to gain by I that? I don't know. Get Bert out. Maybe I don't know. None of this is his fault. Something's got to be done. Matt, you've got to help me. Easy. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? I, I just come from the Texas Trail. I think there's going to be some trouble. Trouble? The bunch that hangs out around there are doing a lot of drinking and... Talking up the idea of coming over here to the jail. Oh, no. Well, maybe we ought to go over there and do some talking ourselves. Jeannie, I think the best thing for you to do is to go back home and stay there till morning. But... Now, don't worry about this. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, but, Matt, you can't handle that crowd alone. I've been handling things alone for a long time. All right, Chester. <laughs> Those are Jim Nixon's, the one who's been agging him on, Mr. Dillon, over there at the end of the bar. Yeah, he struck up an acquaintance with Baudry when he first got off the train. Guess he figures he's an old partner by now. Well, come on. Yes, sir. Matt, Matt, wait. Later, Kitty, I got some business with the boys at the bar. That's what I mean. Tulsa Jim's been buying them drinks for the last two hours. They're in a real nasty mood. So? So be careful, Matt. That's all. Just be careful. Kitty, I'm the carefulest man you know. Sure, sure. We got the law here in Dodge. Supposedly. But what kind of a law is it that lets a man sneak up behind somebody in the dark and murder him in cold blood? I don't know, Tulsa. Suppose you tell me. Dylan. Now, don't let me interrupt you. You were doing fine. Well, this is quite an audience you got. All the panhandlers, bums, and barflies and dodge. It's quite a collection. Well, calling names won't change the facts, Dylan. What facts? A friend of yours, Bert Wells, had sneaking, cowardly murder. That's for the court to decide, Tulsa. The court. They'll turn them loose. They work hand in glove with you. Dylan, we're not going to stand for it. All right, shut up. So you're not going to stand for it, huh? Well, just what are you planning to do? You'll find out in due time, Dylan. Go well, tend to set them up again all around. Yeah, you've turned into quite a free spender, Tulsa. I never knew you to... A ah, double eagle gold piece. You mind if I take a look at it? It's good. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Where'd you get it? That's my business, Dylan. So you're the one who killed Baudry. That's a lie. I thought robbing him was just a cover-up, but it wasn't. There aren't many double eagles around Dodge. Baudry had a lot of them. Now you. 
Where would you get a pocket full of gold pieces, Tulsa? Wells killed Baudry. The blacksmith hammer was lying right beside him. Yes, where you left it. Hey, what does she mean? Tulsa Jim came into my husband's shop late this afternoon. His horse had thrown a shoe. He had plenty of chance to steal that hammer. She's lying. Where did you get the gold, Tulsa? Elias. Elias. I won it. Well, I won it in the poker game last week when, oh, when the trail herd would. Tulsa, you're under arrest for murder. Oh. No, you'll never take me! All right, Doc. You better get up an inquest. Uh, confounded match. You, you never give me any chance to practice on live people. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't know what to do with them, Doc. Well, I, I do get fewer complaints this way. Matt. Matt, does this mean that Bert's free? You shouldn't have come here, Jeannie. Yeah, he's free. Chester will go with you over to the jail and let him out. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for everything. You told me one time in Louisville that... Louisville? That was a long time ago and a long way off. So, uh... Goodbye, Jeannie. Goodbye, Matt. What's it all about, Matt? What? <laughs> What's anything all about, Kitty? Professor, what do you say? We'll just have a little tune, huh? Why, sure thing, Mr. Dillon. What'd you like to hear? Oh, uh, how about that one of Foster's? Uh, Jeannie. Jeannie with the light brown hair. You bet. Yeah. You knew her before, didn't you, Matt? Yeah, I met her in Louisville one summer. Saw her quite a lot for a couple of months. And then I drifted out west. A man misses out on things by drifting. I told her then if she ever needed help to, to call on me. Well, she called, and you helped her. Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, anyway, uh, that's that. Matt. Yeah. Yeah, Kitty. When are you going to help yourself? Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Tom Tully, Lynn Allen, Larry Dobkin, Georgia Ellis, and Barney Phillips. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. What are the tunes most people like best? For the answer to that question, listen to Robert Q. Lewis's Waxworks later tonight over most of these same CBS radio stations. Stay tuned now for Broadway is My Beat, which follows immediately over most of these same radio stations. Roy Rowan speaking. On a Sunday afternoon, the music's delightful on the CBS Radio Network.